honk away. What's going on, everyone? Welcome, Arvinuts. Welcome, everybody, to a Friday stream. Welcome to the final day of March. It is March 31st. Uh, it is about 9.20 p.m. Eastern, and I hope everyone is doing well and looking forward to day seven of Inkle's Sorcery for the Crown of Kings. And uh, I am happy to say that we are going to have a lot of Crown of Kings uh, coming up over the next month or so. I'm not going to talk about the schedule too much, um, except uh, for because I'll save that for possibly tomorrow or maybe next week um, when I have a chance to actually play some of this stuff. But we have completed the schedule thanks to the amazing uh, scheduling work of uh, Triffid in particular. So thank you, Triffid, as always. Uh, and we have gotten our schedule together, and it looks uh, like we're going to have a really awesome April to come. But I'll talk about that uh, very briefly tonight and more later on in a bit. Before I get to any of that, though, what's up, Xanos? Good to see you, man. Let me just remind everyone about ways to support the channel. If you have not done so already, please follow the channel. Please check out our... 46 months of being subbed to this wonderful channel. These amazing peeps. Thank you. Thank you, Wayman. Thank you for the tier two sub. I appreciate that very much. That means that we are actually, you are only a couple of months shy of the coveted four year sub, uh, the four years of sub support. Thank you, Wayman Wolf. I appreciate it very much. Always a pleasure to have you on board and a pleasure to have everyone else on board too. It is good to see everyone here uh, as we lead things off. And I'll keep that in mind about adding uh, bouncy horses on the credit side of things, Prince Justin. Good to see you folks. Um, before we go any further, just a couple of reminders about ways to support us please follow the channel please check out our youtube with exclamation point arvtube uh that is uh, has all the past broadcasts of this and other streams exclamation point arvcord is our discord channel where you can hang out with the arvonauts in between streams despite the weirdness with discord notifications i'm still happy that we have discord and that people are able to hang out and uh, share music and creative things and a whole bunch of other cool stuff so definitely make sure uh to check that out and yes i want to I, I honestly I had no idea uh, whatsoever that there was a Discord events thing. I didn't know that that was a thing until I saw the mods starting to talk about it. So that's totally a Triffid has like taken initiative and has done this thing, which is really cool. I did not even know that it existed. I'm like, what are these events on the top? And then I, I saw the mods talking about it. And I went and I looked and I was like, oh, cool. So anyway, that's really awesome. And I'm really glad that we have another place to notify people um, so people can be aware of events coming up on the calendar. Uh, so yes, um, you can support us uh, by checking out as well the Discord. And then of course, Twitter, where I will always post when I'm going to be going live, etc. That is exclamation point arv tweets for that. Uh, if you have not already done so, oh, and the website for this, by the way, is arvinelleron.com. Exclamation point. Uh, Arv Treon is the Patreon, which is the uh, subsystem um, that we have uh, besides our subsystem. It is a place where you can support the channel. Um, we have many things that are available for you there that you can get for yourself individually, as well as things which will support the channel as a whole. Um, I am a big uh, fan of the Patreon because it is really the financial backbone of the channel and makes it easier for me to be able to uh, do variety of the things which are available to all of you. So please, please, please consider um, that uh, because um, supporting the Patreon uh, will, as I say, help you and help us as a whole. Speaking of helping us as a whole, subbing to the channel, as Wayman Wolf just did, is another way to help us too. Plus, you can get those custom sub badges to use here, there, and everywhere across Twitch. So please consider doing that as well. That would be lovely if you would be so kind as to do that. Uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, that brings us to our publishing stuff. Exclamation point Icarus uh, is my graphic novel from Athis Arts. Exclamation point Library is Tales and Tomes, the Forbidden Library. That is my 5e adventure and source book from Alligator Alley Entertainment. I am very glad to hear that, by the way, Emily. That's great. Also, uh, Xenos, yes, I've heard good things about uh, the D&D movie. I'm looking forward to seeing that also. Uh, I've actually had several recommendations from several sources that I trust have told me that it's good. So I'm like, awesome. I'm looking forward to checking it out myself. Um, so, uh, yes. So Icarus, uh, library and exclamation point gray shade. Uh, that is for, uh, my gray shade novel, which came out last year from Athos arts. Um, and, uh, the sequel to which renegade is going to be coming out later this year. Um, that is now in the final proofreading stage. Um, and, uh, I've also may or may not have, had a chance to see the cover images for uh, the rough cover images 
for Renegade. And let me tell you all, you are not prepared for what you are going to see with this cover. It is going to be amazing. So that's coming out later this year, and you can pre-order that. You can also pre-order the final book in the series, which I did some work on today. That is Heretic, the final book in the series, coming out next year. And, of course, you can pre-order the tabletop role-playing game of Shade coming out later this year. And, of course, uh, you consider as well supporting us because of the audiobook uh, with exclamation point gray shade coming from our very own Trent Sparks also due out later this year. So that's exclamation point gray shade. Um, I am very excited for all of that stuff as we continue on with the uh, world of gray shade. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, exclamation point BLM, Black Lives Matter, very important to affirm and assert the significance and importance of black lives. Exclamation point help now, the World Health Organization page on suicide prevention. Important to reach out to others when you need help and to reach out to others when they need help as well and exclamation point ukraine u-k-r-a-i-n-e to help the people of ukraine as they fight back against an illegal and illegitimate war with bravery and courage this is our chance to do that and step up to help them in the same way that we will hopefully step up uh, and help others who find them in a similar situation in the future one last thing that i want to note is this that has just popped up on your screen and that is uh the event at the klein which is going to be uh the klein memorial auditorium the historic Klein Memorial Auditorium in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This is the kickoff event for ARVCON 2023 to benefit the Damon Running Cancer Research Foundation. And this is going to be starting in a little less now uh, than two months. Uh, May 25th, Thursday, May 25th at 6 p.m. Eastern, a live D&D event. It will star CSE Cooney, Carlos Hernandez, uh, Robert Austin James, otherwise known as Dark Side Rob, and uh, Zach Clay, along with a high school student, will be joining us on stage um, to present uh, Dungeons & Dragons um, live. They'll be doing my Night at the Forbidden Library, and it will be both uh, in front of a actual in-person, you know, physical audience, but also a virtual audience as well. So please consider jumping on board to support us there. And again, I have not only that flyer, but I actually have some other flyers too, which I have recently gotten. Let me see if I can find, uh, let me see if I can grab a couple of these other ones. Hang on a second here. Because uh, I just got some more. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Is it that one? Uh, yes. All right. Hold on. Let me let me show you this one. I'm a fan of this one that they just sent me because uh, because of the thing that's in the middle. So let me let me put this like this. Let me expand this like this so you can all see it. And take a look at this. So this is the other flyer which they just uh, sent out to me. And notice, please, that the QR code that you can scan, please note that there is a dragon at the center of that scan code at the top left. <laughs> so not only does that feature amazing art from Night of the Forbidden Library, but it also has got that dragon at the center of the QR code top left. So I, was, I love that thing as well. And again, if anyone wants to submit these flyers, or I should say, I'm sorry, post these flyers, please let me know because I can send you copies of these digitally uh, and or I'm happy to also mail you physical copies of these where you could put this up. Lotwook was kind enough to put this up um, because also lives in Connecticut and so was kind enough to put this up in some various places which I really appreciate and I'm hoping we can do the same thing with others also. I know that we're still two months out from this folks but I really want this to be a big event um, not only because it would be super awesome if we could actually make this a big event but also I just I, I I'm very excited to see what we can do with this going forward. So not just for ARVCON 2023, but also what we can do with it going forward in terms of a relationship with it we build up with the client. So I love these live events, honestly, um, having done them now at Gen Con a couple of times. I really enjoy these quite a bit. Let me switch that over to that. Um, I love these quite a bit, so I think it would be neat uh, to be able to do that as well. So you've got that one, and you've got that one. So these two events, uh, these two flyers that you can see as well. And I have posted the new one in announcements too, so definitely check that out. Um, and uh, please consider, if you would like, you can drop me a Discord message or a PM, uh, and I would appreciate that very much as we go through. All right, now, having said all of that, let me get rid of this, and let me turn on that. There we go. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you were looking forward to our session today. Let me actually turn this up a little bit uh, because this is a little, just a bit. I think we're just, okay, that's good. So hi, I hope everyone is doing well. I'd like you all to note today what the shirt I am wearing. I am wearing currently the Shrieking Eels, uh, Florin Gilder, the Inconceivable Tour. 
Uh, and by the way, this shirt is even cooler. I wonder if I can show the back of it because let me see if I can show the shirt. Okay. The back of the shirt actually has a map. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. It has a map basically of the Princess Bride on the back of it. So it is, it is pretty cool. Um, I got this at Gen Con, I want to say maybe last year or the year before. Um, and it was, it was pretty cool. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, everyone was doing well and uh, I hope you folks had a good Friday. Now, um, a couple of quick notes. First of all, I want to, I would be remiss if I did not bring this up. I wanted to show you all something which popped in my mailbox today, uh, along with some other things, um, that were part of the, uh, treasures item. I'd like you all to see this. Let's see if I can get this to, ah, ha, ha, please note, if you will, this Kukuri pin. That's right. This is here a Kukuri pin. I know Hillness knows about this. A Kukuri pin. Uh, and now you can see. Yeah, look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. So this is thanks uh, to the amazing uh, creative mind of one Emily the Invincible in chat. Um, and the amazing people at Athos Arts. And so I'm going to be wearing this Kukuri pin today. Uh, during my stream. I want to thank uh, Emily very much for this concept and this idea and for these other treasures, which I got. Um, but I am excited about that. You got two. I actually got a few of them, but that's because I'm going to be distributing some of them. So that's that's going to be the case. Um, you're going to be getting yours tomorrow if the blizzard doesn't mess up the mail. This is pretty slick. I'll tell you why I like this. Um, so I have like a couple of these things, right? Like you, people have like the U.S. flag pins sometimes, okay? Or they have, you know, other different pins for various flags at different places. Um, I have a St. John's pin as specifically a College of Professional Studies pin, which is where um, I taught because it was 150 years old or something like that. So I have those little things. Those are kind of cool too. The neat thing about this is that someone who sees this is probably going to be like, well, what is that? And I'll be like, oh, you're curious? Let me tell you what it actually is. Perhaps it's perhaps you'd like to come closer and see. Um, it's one of those things that's it's almost a conversation starter once people notice the pin. Um, and, you know, it's from a book that is kind of important to me and um, which I hope has some significance and all that stuff. So I, I should use them as cufflinks. What's up, Drew? That's a good call. Hmm. I have to think about that. You know, all of my shirts... I think I only have one shirt that requires cufflinks. I think every other shirt I have, all of the shirts I have are all buttons. Um, I don't, so I don't know that, but I mean, I guess I could just put them on the top. You know where I'm actually looking forward to doing, to wearing this actually is going to be at Gen Con this year. Um, and actually maybe a couple of other conventions where I can put this on some of my button vests. Those of you who have seen me, uh, live and in person at these conventions, um, will know that I'm always wearing vests there and I have a whole variety of them. I've got black and gray and I have a reddish vest, a maroon vest and stuff like that. But one of my vests, one of my favorite ones is kind of this wool um, I guess they, I think it is double, I think they would call it double breasted because it has the two fold overs, um, wool and it's got these multiple buttons down it, but it, it's, this thing I think is going to look, I can't get my mirror right. There we go. This thing is going to look, I think really, really cool on that. So that's pretty slick. Require cufflinks, just pull the buttons off. I guess, Runa. I always feel a little worried about doing that, though. I'm always just like, but then I'm breaking the shirt. Um, but And, of course, I do wear ties. Only thing about a tie is that usually at a convention when I wear a tie, <clears throat> excuse me, the tie usually goes underneath the vest. So by that point, because the tie tack usually goes further down, usually. Um, uh, the tie tack is usually somewhere around mid you know, mid chest somewhere in there. Um, and so this would go underneath that. But anyway, um, but I, I dig it. I think it's very cool. Um, I think it looks very neat. And there were some other things in this too. There were other treasures that were available. Um, so I want to thank Emily because uh, she also, with these treasures, some of the treasures were specifically targeted for particular people in my household. So for example, uh, my daughter was sent a scarf, one of the scarves, which was personally sewn by Emily it is a it is a limited edition. I want that to be clear. A uh, scarf, uh, which my daughter was very. First of all, my daughter was like, "Well, who's that for?" And I was like, "I think it's for you." And then I just put it on her, and she's like, 
oh, <laughs> she's like, really? And um, so it looks very cool. I'll have to make sure that uh, she brings it with her so that you can see it uh, at Gen Con. Um, and then I gave my son, uh, there were two things that were sent. Um, one of them, I think, was a treasure and one of them wasn't. One of them that was a treasure was uh, for the uh, Catalyst, which is uh, my co, my publishing, my author, publisher buddy uh, for Athos Arts, uh, Brandon Crilly's book, Catalyst. Um, there is a squid thing, basically, uh, that was made by Emily. And so I gave one of those to my son along with these star, with these two little, uh, there are these two little star things. One went to Cenevine and one went to him. And they're these like stuffed stars, basically. Um, and so he's already named, he's like, so the star is called Lucas. And the squid, I think he called flike i want to say i think it was flike oh you just made the scarf in the stars you didn't make the squid okay well so the star he called lucas and the squid i think he called flike or flying i wasn't 100 percent sure what he was calling the squid which one is part of the funny guys of fire that 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 tweet by the way hillness is 100 percent true it literally he was like they're up against the funny guys i'm like okay that's pretty of fire and i'm like I support the funny guys of fire. Anyway, um, but thank you, Emily, very much. This is very cool. I am I am a fan of this pin, and I will try to uh, wear it prominently if I can at uh, you know one or two conventions this year, um, and all this stuff. And thank you for the squid. Thank you for the other items in the box which I got as well. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and anyway, it was cool. Um, so yeah. The other thing um, that we found out yesterday, which I thought I would share with all of you since you know my uh, wonderful daughter, Cinnamon, uh my wonderful daughter, Little Larve, is that uh, I was there with her as she uh, was planning for her sophomore year's schedule because we're about to go into April and then we've got April, May and the first two weeks of June and then she's going to be done with her freshman year of high school and she'll be going into her sophomore year of high school at the end of this year, if you can believe that. Um, but I was with her when she was picking out her uh, sophomore year schedule and we were talking about she's going to be doing a class in AP government and she's doing a class in uh, Spanish, um, in uh, world language Spanish. Uh, and she's going to be doing uh, a class in what is called Early College Experience English, uh, which basically is a sort of a class that also provides college credit um, that's associated with the University of Connecticut um, and things like this. And the thing that I wanted to bring up to you that I thought you would all appreciate is that she's – so she's there with her counselor. The counselor is like looking at all the different options or whatever. And the counselor is like, well – you know, you could do this or this or this or this. And there's all, all these different choices. And my daughter is like, wait, I could do all that stuff. And she's like, well, yeah. She's like, your, your grades are exceptional. She's like, so you could do whatever you want. And literally, literally, little Arv was like, and, and so, you know, we talked it through. And when we got back to the car, she was like, really, really happy, like really proud of herself. And again, we, my wife and I, have never pushed the grade thing. We have never been like, you know, you need to work and fight for what's right and blah, blah, blah. We've never done that. She's just a very good student. And um, we worked with her, you know, as to, to sort of get the most out of her classes based on what she's told us. Um, but it was just really nice because she just felt like, wow, like I get to choose different things because I worked hard and I'm a good student. And just this sort of like eye-opening thing where she's like, I get to choose different things and all that stuff. I just, it was really slick. She was really, really liked it. Um, and so um, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. Uh, she is, uh, she's an amazing kid. She's a all full-time, you know, complete honor student. She actually has, they, she has this high school thing where you can get over 100 in a class. So she currently has like 104 in her math class, which she likes to joke with me about. She's just sort of like, hey, dad, guess who got 104 in their math class? And I'm like, how are you doing in history? And she's like, let's not talk about history. Let's get back to the math. <laughs> um, and of course, she's very good. The history is, is her toughest class. And she's it's another AP course. And she's doing exceedingly well on that, too. Um, so she's doing great. And I'm very proud of her, of course. But I made clear to her that I'm proud of her because I, you know, she's a wonderful kid. 
totally separate from anything related to grades. I would be proud of her regardless of what grades she was getting. But it is cool that on top of that, she's providing herself these options. So I think that's super slick. Um, number one was sent to the most famous of all scarf wearers. Well, she has number five, I believe is what I saw. History is in the past. No, she really likes history. It's it, it's no you know the deal with this, Rudinell. Like you need to know history. You need to have an understanding of history so you do not repeat what has happened in history. I think history is important, but uh well, I mean, yes and no, Drew. I mean, like certainly it probably doesn't hurt. Um, but it really is, you know, we made a big effort to sort of make it clear that we it's not about like putting pressure or not putting pressure. We just talked about we really emphasize as much as possible getting the best teachers possible. We are not interested in, you know, the best possible test scores or the bit like that's not what it's about. Um, and she had kind of an unusual educational upbringing in a way because she had um, some years in private school. Then she had the which a progressive school. Then she had COVID, so she was homeschooled for a year because of the whole COVID situation. Then she had a year at a pri at a public, uh, you know, her eighth grade year was public, and now she's at a high school plus an arts program, both of which are public programs at fairly large size kind of programs. So she's had quite a variety um, of experiences, and I think it's served her pretty well. But, um, you know, she's, you know, we've definitely supported her, of course, but I, you know, she's, this is all her um, that's really kind of put this stuff, put this stuff forward. So, yeah, well, sure, Rudinell, that's, that's fair. So anyway, it was, um, it was exciting. I thought that she had five because I thought, I'm pretty sure the note that you sent said that it was scarf number five, I think. Emily, I think. I might be wrong. But anyway, so uh, that was me just sort of, you know, giving you a few extra minutes of me talking about how awesome my daughter is. So, um, But it was nice. We spent some time together as well. She talked to, uh, today, We uh, she talked to a D&D &D club at her school um, and handed out flyers to them about this uh, event at the Klein. Um, so that was very cool. So anyway, it was good to see. And I'm really excited that things have come together for her. It's also been a much better year for her socially. Um, there's been no bullying this year and you know she's gotten some good friends so that's that's been nice so we feel pretty good um about where she is and um yeah so that was that was cool um in any case uh i don't know why i was talking about all that oh i guess just to sort of share stuff with little larva with you um but so uh today we're going to be doing some sorcery and i do want to mention just very quickly i'm not going to talk a lot about the schedule today because i don't like doing that before the month arrives however i do want to mention the fact that um, there is one significant aspect uh, to the calendar, which is now pretty much complete, uh, that I want to mention. And that is that next month, as a consequence of a lot of factors, um, we are going to have uh, we're going to have two expeditions from the Mysterious Peaks. We are going to have one session, it looks like, of Eberron. We are going to have a session of uh, uh, Speculate Court of Blades. Um, and uh, there, there may be either one or two of those. There might be two. Um, but we're going to have a couple of the Court of Blades uh, speculate stuff. We are going to have a Bag of Giving session. We're going to have uh, a session of Shire Adventures. But for a variety of reasons, it turns out that it lines up that we are going to have a fair number of Sorcery 4 sessions. In fact, by my count, after tonight, we are going to have one, two, three, four, five and maybe six. So we're going to have at least five, maybe six sorcery sessions. Now, why am I excited about that? Well, number one, it's because I'm really enjoying sorcery with all of you. But number two, it's because that gives us a fighting chance of getting through it in time for us to get to Jedi Survivor, which is the next game that we are going to be focusing on and which I'm super excited about. And that is coming out in, I think, late mid to late April or something like that. So I'm excited for that. It's going to be good times. It's going to be fun. I am super excited uh, for some Jedi Survivor and for doing a lot of sorcery. Other than that, it's going to be a great month in many other ways. We'll have the Patreon Field Chat Chosen Game of the Month. We'll have D&D &D with GOG, Ghosts of Saltmarsh. We may be able to get a Talisman Adventures in depending on how schedules work out. We will have a Fighting Fantasy Gamebook Illustration stream with Tari again. We will have the Our Vocalist back. So we are going to have a lot of cool stuff um, next month. And that's all going to set up for May, which is, of course, dun dun dun, ARVCON month. So we're going to have a lot of cool stuff happening uh, next month in the lead up to that. But I will talk more about the schedule, as I say, over the next couple of um, sessions. Uh, and tomorrow we have got some expedition from the Mysterious Peaks happening as well. So uh, the scarf was purple. The scarf was purple. Um, I don't remember if it had an embroidered heart. Um, but the scarf was purple. I thought your note said number five. 
I mean, I can try to go look at some point, Emily, but I thought it was five, and the scarf was definitely purple. Um, so, yeah. That's number 10? Wait a second. All right, I don't know. I don't know where I put the note. I don't know where I put the note. I have to go look for the note again when it's not uh, blue lit in my office. Um, I'll have to try to find the note again. Um, I thought the note said it was number five, but in any case, it was a purple scarf. Um, so I know that. And it looks cool, and I, I think it's awesome. So, um, yeah, I, I believe you. Whatever number it is, it is. I just thought that it said five on the note, but I could very well be wrong. I, I was, uh, I've been, I've been a... A busy bee, so it's quite possible that I'm wrong about the number. Either way, I'm very grateful for the scarf. Uh, I think it looks cool, and um, yeah, so she will be wearing this awesome, cool scarf uh, at different times. And yes, um, no, I mean, it was a note for us. It was definitely a note for us, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was definitely a it was definitely a note for us. Um, and we got, uh, yeah, and the box was there with, with all things, so... Yeah, exactly. Number 10, two pins, five, exactly. And then he's like, oh, 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 we will see. Like us counting cats the other day. Um, so, yeah, number one went to Ottawa. Right. Right. I see, I see exactly what happened in each of these cases. So, um, yeah, but today uh, we have got some sorcery coming up. Uh, I am very excited for this. And I am going to have us get to it. Uh, let me pull up that okay so if i pull up the power of steam compels you this one is super easy to do um because this one i don't actually have to fire up any other computer i can play it actually on here yeah i just got it today i got it when we got back from uh from uh from our time out today okay yes steam Yes, yeah, Steam. Yes, yeah, Steam. I know. There's all this cool stuff, Steam. Thanks, Steam. Why are you showing me this, Steam? Okay, let's get rid of that. And then we go back up to here and then downloading. This is all stuff. I already downloaded a bunch of this stuff already. And it's downloading this. Why is there a purgatory up? There was a purgatory update. Of 23 kilobytes. Okay, all right. Those were all pretty quick. That's what I thought. Okay, let us play some sorcery. Ha-ha! There we are. Okay. Now, uh, we have had a kind of a strange... In our... This was our... No, of course. You no, never apologize for being excited. Exactly, exactly. I totally understand the desire for excitement and... Uh, and I was grateful, um, very much grateful for the stuff. And again, the pins, the pin, the Kukuri pin right there. Uh, so, uh, we had a very weird session, I think it's appropriate to say the last time we played this chat. We have been making our way across these towers, um, as we head into this fortress to try to find, uh, the, uh, Anilan, uh, try to find the, um, Archmage of, uh, Mampang, who have stolen the crown of kings from Anilant. Um, we managed to defeat his seven serpents in our last book, meaning that the Archmage is still unaware that we are here, which is great, because the longer we can keep him from knowing that we're here, the faster, or the, you know, the more likely we are to succeed overall. And we've been through a bunch of these towers to get to the stage where we are now. There was this weird tower where there were a bunch of, like, goblins that were like cannibalizing each other and doing all these terrible things like there was some weird magic spell and then we released that and we managed to escape that barely um so there was that there was another thing where we actually got all of our health back um we are out of rations but we have eaten for the day i believe so we're okay with that we're sitting at 15 out of 22 stamina eight gold 
we don't have a god right now because we found something down here where we basically replaced our god with something else. So it's been a little odd, strange, weird um, session, but obviously a ton of fun. Um, and so I don't even remember exactly where we were. Oh, yes, I do remember. Um, so as we back this up here, we found a place that was uh, a chamber that basically has an hourglass and a slate. And the slate is full of chalk markings. There are small regular ticks that run in a line. You put the slate down once more. On the desk, the sand runs through the hourglass. When did it get turned over? You sit in the chair. It is rather comfortable and in very good shape. The slate is full of chalk markings, small regular ticks that run in a line, blah, blah, blah. You rub out the chalk markings, leaving the slate blank. The hourglass finishes running. You pick up the hourglasses, examining it in the light of the door. It is a well-made instrument with brass fittings and fine sand within. You turn over the hourglass and watch the sand run down for a time. Time intones the hourglass. Who's there? You call out, but there is no reply. I will admit to all of you that I don't have the faintest idea yet what the hell this thing is. Um, I, I thought that I had some sense of what it could be, but I don't know for sure. Um, so I think we need to move very carefully with all of this because I don't know exactly what this thing is. Um, except to say that, uh, oops, hold on a second. Make sure I get the right one. Uh, there's plus one more button. Uh, I guess it's this one. Yeah. Um, so we need to, we need to act with caution. I don't know exactly what it is. Don't have a God. I'm here. Hi, Mrs. Dunsla. Happy Friday. All right. Let's fire up our VOT. Okay. And let's do with our polls. Aha! Our VOT plus is here. The line must be drawn here. All right. Um, let me get that fired back up. And let me get our VOT plus up. Uh, the polls are here. There we go. Okay. So, uh, here we are, chat. Let us figure out exactly how we're going to do this. So, what should we do or say? Should we turn the glass once more? Should we say, tell me what this hourglass is? Should we, um, actually, it should be an exclamation point, is, should we look at the hourglass or put the glass down? Let's do it. So now is your chance to vote. <laughs> okay. Sounds good, Xanos. Uh, sleep well. Thank you for stopping by. As always, good to see you, man. Uh, and thank you for being here. Good night. So, yes. Yeah, so, dollar sign vote space one is turn the glass once more. Dollar sign vote space two is tell me what this hourglass is. Dollar sign vote space three is look at the hourglass. Dollar sign vote space four is put the glass down. I have a feeling this is a very important section. I just don't know what it's important for. Like, I don't know what it's doing, actually. Um, so, we need to think, I guess, about that as we go through. And by the way, since I've been asking this to everybody, please spread the word about the show. Um, I really loved having, and I'm hoping the Discord events meant that we had a higher uh, opening turnout. But let's get as many people in here as we can. So, let folks know if you happen to be in an area like, hey, we're doing something really cool, uh, and you can be a part of it. Um, that would be lovely. We do always look at things, but the thing is, for this one, remember, I always have to be a little careful with this one, Triffid, because this one, I don't know whether, because you can see, um, like, I don't, I guess there's not a thing. You pick up the hourglass examining it, then you turn it over and watch the sand run down. I don't know whether looking at it means that other doors close, for if you understand the metaphor. Like, I don't know whether looking at it causes other things to happen that would not be available otherwise. That's why I'm, I'm leaving the look as a choice for chat, um, because of the weird thing that this is. So, uh, okay, last call. But yes, normally I do do that. Yes, indeed. I got we got burned on that actually a couple times last time where I looked on something and all of a sudden it was like you look at this thing and then like immediately it was like something advanced the plot and I'm like wait you know that sort of thing. Yes, thank you, Triffid. That's perfect. All right, tell us what this hourglass is. Okay, tell me what this hourglass is. Whoops, sorry. Where's Rachel? Tell me what this hourglass is. You call out. 
Every grain of sand falls and then can fall again, intones the hourglass. You have the hourglass curse upon you. Uh, I don't want the hourglass curse upon me. What does that mean? Um, er, I, I, that's, sounds bad. I don't know. Every grain of sand falls and then can fall again. You have the hourglass curse upon you. And then it gives us these three choices. Turn the glass once more, look at the hourglass, or put the glass down. Uh, yeah, seriously, I don't... Yeah, we're now aging twice as fast. I, I don't even know what it means. Thank you, Emily. And thank you, Triffitt, for the uh, suggestion there, too. Also good to see, if I haven't already said so, uh, it is good to see Configuration Queen here. It is, uh, I think I, I'm pretty sure I already said hi to uh, Drew, to Emily. I said hi to Rudinell, said hi to Hilmus, I said hi to Prince Justin. It is good to have seen Xenos here. Um, uh, good to see Mrs. Dunsel, of course, Waymond Wolf. Um, and yeah, so, um, so feel free to say hello when you come in. All right, so we're going to look at the hourglass. I'm going to last call this here. And for those of you who have not played this with us before, uh, you if you type in chat dollar sign vote space one, you actually vote to get to move this forward. Um, and you get to decide what chat does. That is what has led us to this point. We've played through all three books leading up to this, uh, all three games leading up to this, and that's brought us to this point. And I think at the end, I'm probably going to be one of the only channels on Twitch that has streamed both this and and the original sorcery book game book series because we streamed all of that um as well that was a number of years ago but we streamed all of that too dollar sign vote space fireball you won't be able to fireball here it is not a valid option okay going once going twice all right let's look at that hourglass shall we stop doing that look at the hourglass Peering into the bulb of the hourglass, you spy a million grains of sand tumbling from the top well to the bottom. Each grain glimmers for a moment as it passes through the neck, as though for an instant it was the most important thing in the universe, and then it is gone, replaced by another and another. All are important until the glass is turned again. One end of the glass is different from the other, however. One end unscrews. Oh, that's understandable, Drew. Uh, what are you making, by the way? Okay, this is a situation where I am going to look closely at the sand um, as opposed to before because this feels like we've already looked at one thing. This feels like it's not going to make anything speed up, so I think it's okay to do this. You peer more closely at the sand. Each grain contains a tiny world. Each grain contains an action. There are thousands, one upon the other upon the next. Okay, so now we have... Three choices again, but somewhat different. We have turn the glass once more. We have unscrew the top of the glass. Or we have put the glass down. Turn the glass once more. Unscrew the top of the glass or put the glass down. <laughs> the hourglass curse, you say. Oh, yeah, Wayman? No, I, I'm because my guess is I'm sure that someone has streamed this at some point on Twitch. Maybe not the whole thing, but I'm sure that they've streamed part of it. But I am positive that even if someone has streamed all four of these games, I guarantee they haven't done that and also streamed the original game books. Like, I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure there are a couple of people who have streamed some of the original games books. I know that Yogg's cast streamed um, some of the Fighting Fantasy game books on their YouTube channel. But combining these, I don't think so. And certainly not where chat gets to make the call. That's another thing, too. 
Okay, it looks like, I'm going to last call this, but it looks like everyone is in favor of the same thing, which is to, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, Rude, no, exactly, exactly. Okay, here we go. We are going to unscrew the top of the glass, all right. You begin to turn the top of the hourglass. It screws easily enough. All that is done can be undone, intones the voice, even that which cannot be done. The top of the hourglass is now open. Ooh, all right, Chad, here we go. So this one is simple choice. Oh, thank you, Emily. Uh, dollar sign vote space one is turn the glass over. Dollar sign vote space two is screw the lid back. So the top of the hourglass is open. So dollar sign vote space one means we turn the glass open uh, over and the top of it is unscrewed. Dollar sign vote space two means we screw the lid back. In before, we like pour it out and it's just like, you have destroyed countless worlds, you creature of death. Like, like the thing with the, the beacons where we left it and we're just like, you have, you have murdered millions. We're like, what? We're just the thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think Chad is, is simpatico with me on this one. I, 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 I am uh, I'm on board with this call, these decisions. Okay, going once, going twice. All right, let's do it. You go to turn over the glass when something gives you pause. Clearly, wrapped up inside this hourglass is some terrible, powerful magic. Perhaps if you do not know what it is, you should not invoke it. Oh, it's giving us the double choice, chat. Dollar sign vote space one means turn the open hourglass. Dollar sign vote space two means screw the lid back. It's giving us that that double choice. Right, I don't I don't know. I have no idea. This is of course not at all. This is again an example of Inkle going way off the book. And honestly, I feel like the games are at their best. I because I love as I as I said, the game books, the sorcery game books are in my mind the best game books ever made. They're spectacular. But I think that Inkle has done extraordinary stuff by taking these little unpopped popcorn kernels in the book and just and making them into something you just they just are mind blowingly not what you would have expected, you know? Yeah, I the DM exactly exactly. Do you definitely want to do that? <laughs> yeah, see that's right. My thought exactly configuration queen. I'm like, well, what is the alternative? We just stay. I don't I don't know. So yeah, who knows? Who knows? This may or may not be the right thing, but you can certainly try. But I feel like this, this, I mean, who knows? I feel like we have not been rash, you know what I mean, in doing this so far. Like, this isn't one of those just like, you know, oh, whatever, let's just, you know, screw the devil, take the hindmost. Like, it wasn't, it's not like that, I don't think. Every voice wants to know where this goes, yeah? All right, well, we are going to, we are going to see. All right, last call, last call. All right, let's do it. You lift the hourglass, making to turn it over. Oh my God, what does this game do? This action is irrevocable. If you do not truly understand its consequences, you should strongly consider not doing it. What the f... I... I I, what why is this putting this in red i don't know yeah like what it really is like what yeah uh, the only thing i'm going to say is if this like uninstalls the game like immeasurably then i'm going to be really mad i'm i'm guessing it's not doing that i don't know i i don't know i'm like this ends the game yeah i don't even i don't I don't know. I don't know what this does. I have no idea. It says all that is done can be undone, even that which cannot be done. That's got to mean something positive, right, for doing this. Maybe we found a secret boss. Suddenly you face the Sandman. I mean, sort of, but remember that the game does not save the typical way. 
the game the game does not have like multiple save points you know what i mean if you do not truly understand its consequences could be All right, here we go. Then you turn the glass over. Sands tumble through the glass neck and scatter across the floor. One last time, intones the voice. You feel an incredible weight lifting from your shoulders and a sudden sickening feeling enters your stomach. What have you done? The curse of Throbin has been lifted from you. Death will now be permanent. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Does that mean that like we don't get a save now? I don't know what that means. It seems, but it says the curse of Throbin. So that's a good thing, right? It was the curse of immortality. We're no longer immortal. Immortal. I don't understand the writing of it, though. You feel an incredible weight lifting from your shoulders, and then a sudden sickening feeling enters your stomach. So that's... Good? Ish? Maybe? Wow, I, I have no idea what to make of that. I don't know. It sounds to me like it probably is positive. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Triffid, no. I, because the stuff that we had before, it didn't know. There was nothing before that kind of led to it one way or the other. All right. Let's, you know what? I do know, I do know this. <laughs> I do know this, that um, they did say that there are things that happen within the game that really affect stuff. So it's, it's a callback to three. Okay. So I, I don't, yeah. All right. So I, I think, I think we're okay. I don't think that it was unreasonable to do what we did, I think is, is what this comes down to. So... Um, ooh, we can collect the sand. I guess we hit the roguelike button, maybe. Maybe so. Um, okay. So now what are we going to do, chat? Uh, dollar sign, vote space one, search the room. Two is sit on the chair. Three is collect the sand. And four is leave. You know what this reminds me of? You know what this reminds me of a ton? Is the sequence in Krull when they go to visit the Widow of the Web and she basically gives them this thing that will allow them to freeze time for long enough for the to escape the spider, but then the spider will go and like wipe out the um uh will then wipe out the widow of the web. That was an incredible you know. I, yes, I know that like Krull has like some '80s cheesiness. There were some really good moments in Krull, like unironically cool moments in Krull. There really are. That sequence with the whole widow of the web thing was freaky. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly, Arudinel. That's what I'm thinking. Also, yes, I'm thinking this may have been something we had to do, but like under the circumstances, how will be a big part of it. You know. Uh, that's that's what I'm thinking also. So we'll see. I think, and to go back to what you, you were saying, Arunel, I also think that it may not end up being lame. It's possible that it's a really gutsy and impressive move on the part of the game designers, but I don't know yet. I feel like the jury's still out. Okay. Look at how Chad is all like on board with each other today. Chat's all like, absolutely, seven in favor. I agree. Let's, let's collect the sand. You gather up the sand from the floor. It seems now like ordinary sand. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so we can now 
uh, search the room, sit on the chair. We can collect the sand. We did that already. So now we just have these things. Search the room, sit on the chair, or leave. That's not true. Is that true, Commander Dunsell? Right, right, right. Yeah, and it, and actually, which is unusual, I agree with you, which is unusual because the game, I think, has been exceedingly well-written, so that is a little bit of a backstep, I agree. But it's not a bad mechanic, it's just that it's sort of hard to understand. I agree with you there. Is that true, Commander Dunsell, that the game, that literally Krull was supposed to be D&D, but they lost the license? In But Krull is like, isn't Krull like 83? That's really early. Really? I mean, I can see the D&D &D feel, but it feels really early before, like, D&D &D was even... Because, you know, Dungeons & Dragons starts hitting the popular consciousness right around that time. Like, Redbox, you know, hits, like, 85 or 86, which is when I get involved with it. And then I get all the first edition books and the second edition books and all that. And Krull is, like... Isn't Krull 83? I want to say Krull is 1983 or 84 or something like that. I'm surprised. I mean, I, I'm not surprised w once you say it. I go, oh, yeah, because as, as was said, Krull does feel very D&D-ish. But I just didn't think that D&D &D had that much, like, cachet at the time, you know? That's what I thought. Krull is 1983. So, d I mean, that feels really early for them to even want the license. Well, listen... And we had another example of how these things actually worked. Wow. And an example of uh, life imitating art. I have one of those like affirmation apps on my phone. And uh, the affirmation that just came up. Uh, was the affirmation which just came up was I speak my dreams into existence based on what we just did how wild is that I speak my dreams into existence do 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 the director got an early because they were a fan that could be okay so last call let's get these votes in folks two for search the room one for sit in the chair Oh, God, the glaive. The glaive was a D&D &D weapon. Well, yeah, I could... Uh, it's such a cool weapon. I will mention, actually, that there is a... Um, one of the weapons that you can find, and I don't want to spoil it, but one of the weapons, and Emily will know this one, anyone who has read the not my, first, the, my novel, Grey Shade, the first novel of the Grey Assassin trilogy, will know that there is a an extremely powerful weapon. That powerful weapon was partially, not entirely but partially inspired by the glaive. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying that. There, because obviously D&D, &D, you know, chainmail is like 75, 76. I know that it was out there, but what I'm saying is that it wasn't part of the cultural consciousness to the same degree yet. Like, at the time, 83, it still felt very niche, right? Then the red box hits, then you get the satanic panic and all that stuff of the late 80s. And, and once you get to that, then I totally understand why it would be there. I was just surprised that before it really kind of hit, in quotes, mainstream, it could have been considered as being on a movie side of things. You know what I mean? So. That's all I meant. Uh, okay. There we go. Search the room. Search your room. You know it to be true. Okay. A thorough search of the room reveals nothing. No hidden doors, no secrets, and no traps. On the floor of the room are four large grooves. Okay, so here's an example where I'm going to look at the grooves in the floor. The four grooves are large but not enormous and have no obvious practical function. They lie side by side in the center of the tower, each running from east to west. Okay. 82 is mazes and monsters. Fair. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. That's true. 74? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, as I say, I get the red box around 84, 85, somewhere in there. So the original, yeah. 
So Chainmail, Chainmail is earlier than I thought, actually. I didn't realize it was that early. So D&D comes out in 74 uh, from TSR. And it's obviously based originally on Chainmail, but I didn't realize that Chainmail was 1971. That's interesting. So the original Dungeons and Dragons was a small box set of three booklets. Yeah, I knew about that. 1974. Um, a thousand copies were sold in the first year, followed by 3,075. Then there were the original Greyhawk and Blackmore supplements, both 1975. And the basic set came out in 77. Boy, I did not realize it was that early. I knew that it was 70s, but I was thinking later 70s. Um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition was 89. Well, I knew about that. Um, blah, 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 blah. It was presented as a continuation. And then you had, right, and then AD&D. And basic D&D went in a different direction. Wow. I didn't realize that. Chainmail comes out the year before I was born. And then D&D itself. I'm two years old when D&D comes out. <clears throat> Boy, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, did not realize. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, what are we doing? We are, we did search the room. Uh, so, two choices here, chat. Uh, sit on the chair or leave. Very simple. Dollar sign vote space one, we sit on the chair. Dollar sign vote space two, we leave. That's what we got. Dollar sign vote space one, sit on the chair. Dollar sign vote space two is leave. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I say, I remember, and I remember distinctly where I got it, too. I got the, uh, red box in, uh, I want to say the bookstore. It was at the Farmington Valley Mall. I was in Canton at the time. I know I was in Connecticut when I got it. And it was like 83, 84 or something like that. And I still have that red box back there. And that was my introduction to this extraordinary world. And then I went back and I got the first edition books and I got all this stuff and I got a ton of modules and all this business. And this began my love affair with what I still would argue to this day is the best game ever made. It's flawed, it has problems, but it's still, to my mind, the best game ever made because it it redefined how we imagined games. Um, and so. Art and Arcana. Yeah, I've read a couple of these histories of it too, and I actually have a, uh, a video game uh, history book as well that I've read through. Art and Arcana. I should check that out, Drew. Yeah, that's a good call. I should do that. I just am surprised. Again, in my own mind, I, I just know that I got it, you know, 83, 84. So I'm like 12 at the time, 13, something like that. Um, and I played for the first time. First time I ever played D&D &D was recess of sixth grade. Um, and sixth grade had to be... What was sixth grade for me? Well, ninth grade was 84. 6, 87, so 8th would be 85, 86, 7th would be 80, 45, uh, 6th would be 83, 84, yeah. So I, I played it for the first time in 1983, and I probably got the red box like 84, 84, 85, something like that. The best game until Grey Shade, the, oh, well, yeah, I mean, at that point, you know, they're going to redefine games, sure, but I'm just saying up until then. Okay. Uh, right. So, um, that is right. Sit on the chair. You sit down. Were you not already sitting? Okay. I got it. I was just curious. You have found one new clue. Wait a minute. I found a, we found a clue, chat. We have found a clue. We f Oh! We found a glyph in the Tower of Time. Interesting. Okay, so those four grooves that we found, that's a glyph. I wonder what that's for. I don't know what it's for, but we found something. So that's good. This is the Throben Doors. Yep, I was re I read all the Dragonlance series as well. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's really cool, Arudinel, the first part of that. And I'm sorry about the books being ruined in the basement flood. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Sucks. Okay. Now, we have already been, chat, back to the west here. So I'm going to move us to the east because we've already been to the west. And you may not have remembered that from before. Another walkway leading between two doors. South door is closed. North one holds a jar. You approach the tower door. The door on this side is exactly the same as the door on the other, except there is no sign. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. So we could open the door, or we could cast a spell. Here's what we got. Why would it hold a jar? Yeah, such a loss. I lost all of my, when we moved from, uh, originally from Connecticut, uh, when I moved stuff out of my mother's place uh, from Connecticut down, one box got taken to the dump, and it was the box that had my original Intellivision to my Intellivision cartridges, my Nintendo, my Nintendo cartridges, like all that video game stuff, my Sega Master System. That sucked. That was, that was not cool. That was the sort of the most, like, ugh, that I've lost um, was one of those deals. So I know that feel about losing something really important like that from from your childhood. Okay, so we've got dope. This opens uh, locks and doors. So we could cast that. No, Atari was... I was an Intellivision snob, uh, Dragon. Atari, you could fit like a million games onto one cartridge because all of them had a horrible graphics. A friend of mine had an Atari. I hated the Atari joysticks and I thought it was just junky compared to what I, snobbily, thought was the superior Intellivision quality at the time. I'm being partly, of course, joking. Uh, okay, cast Sus, um, which is Sense Danger. Again, one stamina. Or... I don't know why we'd want to cause depression, but okay. <laughs> I mean, what's funny, of course, is that the Intellivision controllers, I now know, upon reflection, suck. I actually have an order in for a new design controller because the last time I did my television session, literally my thumb was sore for like four days because those side buttons, the television controller sucks. Like I, I have learned, you know, how bad they are, you know, um, playing with them now. But at the time I was all like, okay, so zip. Allows us to teleport. No stamina involved there. Ugh. Oh, that's all. Ugh. Ugh. Blah. What is what is the Coco Ten, Arudno? What's the Coco Ten? Zap is lightning. Not sure where we need that. Whoops. Uh, let's see. R. I almost ca I almost caused an RSS feed. Um. Now we only have. I think we've only got one holy water. Um, left. So we want to be. We want to be really careful. I also don't know why we would do this here. But. I have to add some more options on here. Color Computer 10. Interesting. I mean, I had a TRS-80. We used to call it Trash-80. I had a TRS-80, which is another thing I lost in that same that same box. Ugh. Ugh. It still, still hurts. Still hurts. 
Okay, um, let's see. F. Ah, see the future. I'm gonna save this uh, once I have this done so that we have other options if we need to. Far. And find safe passage. Okay, or we could leave the door alone, although if we do that, we're kind of stuck and we'd have to go back again, so I'm not sure that we want to do that, actually. Um, all right, so yeah, we had the Commodore 64. Oh, that sucks, Rudinell. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. That sucks. Okay. So there we go, chat. So I'm going to open this up. Actually, I'm going to save this first. Because... Okay, I'm going to save this as... Spell list... In towers. Okay, now I'm going to open this up. So, chat, we have open the door. We have cast dope, which is open locks and doors. That costs one stamina, which is, you know, we have 15 out of 22. It's not terrible, but we want to be a little bit careful about the health. Cast sus means sense danger. That takes one stamina. Cast sap causes depression. I don't know why we would do that, but one stamina. Cast zip is causes teleportation. That's possible. I assume that means we would teleport through the door. Um, sort of Nightcrawler style in X-Men 2, I would think. Um, we do have a green ring, so we've used it before. That doesn't cost us any stamina. Cast Zap causes lightning. That's three stamina. I have no idea why we would do that. Cast Res is resurrect dead. I don't know why we would do that. Also, it would use up our holy water, and we know that we need a holy water for the Archmage. We need to hold on to at least one vial of it for him. Cast Wrap means we talk all languages. We just put a green wig on. I don't know what we're using that for, but it doesn't cost us anything to do it. Cast Far means we can see the future. We do have a crystal ball, so we can do this for free if we want. Cast How means find... I apparently wrote Sage Passage. I meant Safe Passage. That's one stamina, or leave the door alone. So dollar sign, vote space one is open. Two is dop, three, sus, four, sap, five, zip, six, zap, seven, res, eight, rap, nine, far, ten, how... And 11 is leave the door alone. So please get your votes in. <laughs> Smashing all the buttons randomly. Yeah, and then my friend, uh, my uh, friend Dan, in the late 80s, so this is like 88, 89, had an Amiga. And so he was the kid. He ended up going to MIT, and he was like the science genius and everything. So he like, you know, we, and I remember playing Marble Madness on that. And the Amiga was this strange, mysterious beast. Like I had, you know, later on, I think 89 or 90, no, maybe 88, I got a Nintendo. So I had that and I had in television consoles and whatever. And I had the trash, I had the TRS-80. I, I used a Commodore Pet at school sometimes. And then I advanced up to other models. Um, but really, we don't get our first real computer until we get a Packard Bell 386 at home. And I don't start using it for actual school stuff until, um, I think, the second semester of my freshman year of college. And then I start using it for that, and then I get my own leading-edge 486, and then I'm off to the races with a computer, but uh, with computer stuff. But, um, but yeah, before that, it was just, you know, his Amiga was like this other thing. <laughs> That's funny here now. <laughs> Marble Madness was tough, too. That game was hard. That game was hard. Okay, last call, last call. It was not easy to control that. Yeah, it was just... Because the physics of it, like, controlling it, were like, ooh. Burger Time and Spider-Man. So, Burger Time was on ColecoVision. It was also on... ColecoVision was good underrated actually console burger time was on ColecoVision. it was also on atari where it looked terrible and it was also on in television i used to have it 
and I still remember the the theme was and then repeat that for the next like million times and you'll have it seared into your brain the way it was seared into mine and when you were walking across the bun it would be like you're like running from like ketchup and mustard and you know Marble Madness did have a great soundtrack. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Kool-Aid Man. Did you ever play a Rudinell Journey on um, Atari? Where you're like, literally, you're, you're, you play uh, Steve Perry, and you're running back to the Scarab, which was like Journey's big thing, and trying to avoid groupies. And the whole time you're doing that, the theme on the Atari, which was as much as it could manage, was ba 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 ba. You did, Prince Justin. Oh my gosh, it's true, Rino. It's true. But when I got in television, I was just like, oh my god, it was so bad. It's just. Blah, 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 blah. It was so blatty. Ugh. And of course, I played, I did with my friend. I said that my friend had an Atari, and we did play Adventure on the Atari, which was uh, the game where you uh, run this cursor around a castle and try to avoid these dragons that look like ducks. And when the dragon caught you, there's no end screen. You just get caught inside the stomach of the dragon, and it's just there. Like, you can move your cursor around and it doesn't let you go out of the dragon's belly and it just sits there. You just have to reset. <laughs> the Atari anniversary thing? Yeah. Don't stop believing. I mean, it's a good song. It's just that uh, as it's filtered through Atari, like, blah, 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 blah. Also, in fairness, this was the Atari 2600, the OG. I don't know what the 5200 was like. I heard rumors that the Atari 5200 was like a big advancement, but I never played that or saw it or anything like that. All right, we are going to cast Dope by the will of chat. Here we go. Dope. Consulting the stars, you bind the magic and you hear the latch unlock. Then the door swings open by itself. Hmm. Interesting. So, that means we can now... We now have 14 out of 22 stamina. Close the door, or we can cast a spell... Let's see if I'm allowed to cast the same stuff. I think it's the same business. Yeah, okay. So it's the same thing. It's the same stuff except not dope, which we've already cast. So I'm going to open up that same thing. Dope! I don't know how else to... Because it's for open, right? So otherwise it'd be like dop. I guess I could do. So same... Basically a similar vote chat. Do you want to close the door? Which seems silly because we just opened it. Do we want to enter or do we want to cast a spell? And if you want to cast a spell, you can cast Sus to sense danger, Sap cause depression, Zip cause teleportation, Zap causes lightning, Res resurrect the dead. Again, careful because we don't ha we don't have a lot of holy water. Rap talk all languages. Far see the future. How find safe passage or leave the door alone. So we can do actually. Uh, forget about eleven. We can't actually leave the door alone. My apologies. Never mind that one. So don't vote for eleven. That's my bad. Um, but everything else there is an option. And again. Uh, be, you know, be conscious. We have 14 out of 22 stamina, so we want to make sure that we're not, you know, like, totally blowing us out. Although, when we started this book, we actually started the game, we had 18 stamina, and we got 4 stamina when we gave up a god or whatever the hell we did. So, yeah, there doesn't look like there's an option to do that, sadly, Pandor. Unfortunately not. This is very cool, this event info thing on Discord. This is neat. We do not have food. I think we ate today, Mrs. Dunsel, 
but we're now out of rations, so we're going to have to get something else. We do have some emergency situation where we have a couple of, um, we do have a couple of Blimberry potions. Kooky Canuck, 53 months of support. Thank you so much for the Prime sub, Kooky Canuck. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope all is well, Kooky Canuck. How you been? Thank you so much for the resub. So let me just show quickly what we have here. Okay. Uh, so, where's this thing? We have Blimberry Juice. So in an emergency, we could use Blimberry Juice, which would not only restore stamina, but also would count as a ration. The problem, though, is that Blimberry Juice is also used for, like, an anti-disease thing. And once we use that up, we're out of luck. We do have two measures of holy water as well, but again, I just am very cautious about using this based on the idea that we're going to need it. We have two jewels of gold. Wow. We have a lot of spell items. But then we have been playing this since book one, so... Alright, chat looks like they are in favor of entering. Hit the door frame to make noise to attract the mindless monster. We should do that. We should start doing the hourglass voice. We should just be like, what is done cannot be undone. You know? Yeah, I would agree. At some point soon, we need to figure out how to handle that. All those cool events. Triffid, was it is it a pain to do those events on Discord or was it is it fairly intuitive? That's awesome. I feel like I, I don't know whether that's been a thing forever and I just didn't know it or something, but like <laughs> it's it's very cool. We are no longer immortal. And I don't know about the whole permadeath thing. I that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know what it means. I don't know what any of it means. I honestly don't know. And that's the thing, Dunsel. I don't know whether, whether we're in a position that, like, we're... I, I, don't, I don't honestly know what it means. I guess maybe it's permadeath. I don't, I don't really know. Okay, cool, Driven. Yeah, and, you know, KB also used to... Problem Pandora is we can't really return to town as such because we're in the fortress, so... Um, by the way, a reset button. Yeah, maybe, Wayman. Um, KB Toys is also where I bought a bunch of my, like, modules. In fact, I think I still have a couple of the original KB Toys stickers on there. See, that was my thing. I did have a Toys R Us, and I got some of my Intellivision cartridges from there, but the Toys R Us was not that near me. We had a Toys R Us in West Hartford, and I grew up in Canton. So West Hartford was like a half hour, you know, trip, basically. Whereas KB Toys was like 10 minutes, and you just drove down to the little mall area. Um, so KB was my place. KB was the toy store that I always went to, so. Yeah. 97, wow. Yeah, it was, we were all about the KB toys, and then a little bit. A, they also had a paperback booksmith in my mall there. I don't know if anyone remembers that one. Merchant of Venus, which became Forbidden Planet. Oh, wow, Prince Justin, that's awesome. Yeah, no, we didn't do that. There was another toy store in my town called the Wooden Toy that was, as you might imagine, all, like, handmade wooden toy stuff. I still have a couple of those things. I have a Skittles, not the candy, but the game, like a top game where you knock over, like, bowling pins and stuff that I still play with my kids that we got at the Wooden Toy. Mm. I think that was the Wooden Toy, yes. I believe it was. And there's another toy store that I actually took my daughter to and uh, will try to take my son to called Necker's, which was um, in Simsbury. Uh, which we went up to, I think, last year or something like that. It's still around. It's been bought by someone else, but it's still a toy store and all that stuff. So that was cool. Yep, I had that too. I had that too, Pandor. Okay, we're going to enter. I agree with this choice. You step through the doorway a second time, and you enter the room beyond. Wait, what? What? 
You are back in the little room with the hourglass and the table. What? We go here. Oh, I think I went the wrong way. <laughs> okay, that's on me, chat. I went the wrong direction. You make your way across a stone walkway. <laughs> yeah, Walden Books. We had a Walden Books too. That was, that was in West Farms Mall. So West Farms Mall, which I actually worked a little bit at later on, much, much later, um, when I was in my 20s and I was working in an electronics boutique. Um, once in a while I went there, although the main one that was close to me was at the Buckland Hills Mall in Manchester. But yeah, Walden Books. Yep. And I actually got, you know, I think I've talked about this before, but the first sorcery book, which is the Shamantanti Hills, I bought at Caldor's. And a lot of you will not even know that, but Caldor's was prior to, it was replaced by Kmart, which was then replaced by Walmart, basically. It was in the same kind of niche. So I bought my original one from Caldor's. I think I still have the price sticker on that from Caldor's. Oh, man. Okay. You make your way across a stone walk walkway, arcing, arching high into the air above the swirling waters that pool below until you reach the next curious tower. The sun has reached its highest point now. Okay, so it's about noon. The tower contains a large circular room. A few steps in, however, and you begin to lose your bearings. Though the tower itself is a simple, clear space, there is something disorientating about it. Perhaps it is because there are so many doors, between 20 and 30 at a rough guess. Yeesh. Worryingly, in the middle of the floor lies a skeleton. Okay, let's look at the skeleton. You look over the skeleton. It seems perfectly intact, curled up as though asleep. There are no signs of injury, no shattered bones or twisted limbs. Fragments of cloth remain here and there. Okay, this is a case where we're looking at. Pac-Man and Atari 2600 connected to a 13-inch B&W Zenith TV. Those stupid ghost killing is a lack of color. Yeah. My first ever video game console, in quotes, was this triangular console that had Pong, like one of the shoot 'em up you know, like kind of like Duck Hunt-ish type games, and then a racing game. Uh, and I think it was like a Coleco thing. That was pretty old. And that was on my old black and white that eventually became a very not great uh, color TV. I had a Sanyo. I don't know if you know what those are. I had a Sanyo, which was like a off-brand, not Sony, but Sanyo. So, oh, you mentioned Caldor's two second, two minutes ago. Did you, and I missed that? Oh, no kidding. Yeah, Caldor's back in the day. King's Department Store. I know Ames. We did, we did have an Ames. It wasn't there, but there was an Ames, and then, yeah, Kmart, and then Walmart. Yep, the wood age. Okay, look at the fragments. Looking more closely at the fragments, you can see they are not the robes of a sorcerer or a merchant, but the rags of a peasant. Some local of Mampang, perhaps. Under one flap of cloth, you find a simple bronze ring that has fallen from a finger joint. All right, now, now I do need to have us. So take the bronze ring. Actually, let me look at the doors first. Wait. You turn your attention to the doors set at regular spaces around this space. There are about 60 or 70 of them. You can no longer tell which door is the one you came in from. The Telestar from Coleco. Yes, that's it. That's it. It was the Telestar. That's right. That's the triangular one, right? There, it had the, it had triangular cartridges. I remember that you could fit into the top, but I only ever had the one. And I think I got it from my cousin, if I, if I'm correct about that. So take the bronze ring, count the doors, open a random door, cast a spell. Okay, looks like we got fewer options here, which is fortunate. Far. See the future. That actually could be useful in this situation. And it doesn't cost us anything to do it, because we have a crystal ball. Alright. So we have far. I bet how... Is this how? Find safe passage. Got that. Tiger Games. Yep, yep, yep. I remember that very well. I did not have that, but a friend of mine had that. It was so weird. A game that I did have like that, though, that was awesome was this game uh, was uh, Galaxian. Uh, and it was like a handheld. Galaxian was also, of course, an arcade game. 
but they had a handheld version of it. Um, and uh, you could play one player. I got to be pretty good at that. Or two player, where one player played the monsters and one on one side, and the other player played the um, the ship. And um, and I remember the music was like was the music from it. Very very cool. I remember that back in the day. Uh, Zap. Why would we cast Zap? Cause lightning. And is this zip? A yeah, teleportation. I guess I could see... I could see that maybe. If we wanted to like just teleport through the room or something. Although I don't know where we'd be going. Uh, wait, is that... No, okay, good. Um, R. Again, why are we doing that? I should have used my spell list and I didn't do it. And now I now I now I regret my choices. Holy water in my love. <laughs> okay. Rap, yep. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this. Oh well. <laughs> oh, you had in television. Well, that's what I had. Archon, the video game. I don't think I remember that. That sounds very familiar to me, Runo. I mean, I never had one of those, but I feel like I saw that at some point. It sounds very familiar. Uh, and then D, right? Why would we cast open again? Okay, well. Yeah, a lot of these things were expensive at the time. When my parents got me Dark Tower, they acted like it was a sacrifice for them. They had to save up to get it, and Dark Tower cost $80. Now, it, if you were to get that now, it would probably be like a hundred, but it wouldn't, it isn't like, it wasn't like it cost 50 and now it would cost 150. Like, they got me that game back in like 84, 83, 84, or 85, something like that. So it was, you know. Yep, I remember that, Prince Justin, yep, yep. Okay. So there we go, chat. So what do you want to do? Do you want to cast? So again, so we're looking at this situation. Uh, oh, and the last one, I should have said make a move. Actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait a second, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Give me one, I, I left one out. Okay, there we go. Now we can do it. So we could take the bronze ring from the skeleton. We could count the doors. We could open a random door. Or we could cast a spell, and we have see the future. That's far. We can do that for free. How find safe passage that costs us one stamina. Zap causes lightning three stamina. Zip cause teleportation. Maybe that teleports us through the room. Resurrect the dead. I guess that would be used to resurrect the skeleton. But my worry here is that again we have two doses of holy water, and we need we need at least one dose of holy water to deal with the archmage. So I'm, I'm really wary of using it. Obviously it was very effective against those creatures um, that we found outside that gave us the other holy water, but I'm just very wary about that. Rap is talk all languages. I don't know who we do that with, but I guess we could. Dope opens locks and doors, but I mean opening, it's not the issue is not opening a door, it's figuring out which one to go through or making a move, so. You did get to see him play Archon 2. Ah, interesting. Yeah, there was some weird stuff back in the day. There was also stuff, of course, that was super dangerous. I've talked about this before. I had this foam cutting kit, 
where so you had these pieces of like you know regular standard foam not the stuff that creates the 65 million little white foam pieces which are horrible and get everywhere i don't mean that i mean the ones that was like kind of a sort of a stiffer kind of foam and then there was this object that was basically a um a battery it was powered by a couple of batteries probably a c batteries or something double a's are all very modern at the time it was all c batteries and d batteries but you go up this way, right, and it had these two arms, and then it had this wire over it and a trigger. And what you would do is you would press the trigger, and it would heat up the wire, and then you would use the wire to cut through the foam, and it cut like a knife through butter type of thing. So you could make all this stuff. But it heated up a wire, like... And it was just an exposed wire. Like, it wasn't protected by anything. It was like, thinking back, it's like the most dangerous toy. Like, what the flip? So, we had that. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, Drew. The, at the time, it would not have cost $200 for the Dark Tower game that we have now. It wouldn't have cost that. That's what I'm saying. So, it wouldn't have kept up with inflation completely. So we had that. I had a spirograph. They still have spirographs today, of course. And one of my favorite things, and I got this when I was a freshman in high school, I think. They had a master caster. I still have it to this day. I think it's sitting over there, actually. A master caster, which was where you literally made wax cars. And they had these little wax, um, uh, these little wax molds. And you could melt. They had these little wax uh, sort of circles that you put in to this device. And then you would crank this crank and it would move the car mold underneath it. And then it would literally move over and it would heat up and melt the wax. And this was all internal, so it was much safer. And then it would literally pour. The hot wax would pour into the mold. You roll it out. And then it would dry and then you pop it out and you have a functional, because you put two wheels in it, like two wheels with axles, a really good functional car, like a car, like a, like a Hot Wheels type car that worked really well. Now, it was made out of wax, so you had to be careful because you couldn't do what you could do with your Hot Wheels. Like you could, Hot Wheels cars, you could beat up and Matchbox cars, you could beat up and put them on, like jump them on ramps and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You couldn't do that with this. You're going to break off pieces of it. But it was very cool, though. Um, I had so much fun with that. And I looked, and you can't get the wax things for it anymore. You can get little candle pieces, but you can't get the wheels on axles anymore the way you used to. Oh, yeah, the Easy Bake Oven. I never had an Easy Bake Oven, but wasn't the Easy Bake Oven, didn't it just have like a light bulb in it that heated the stuff? Yeah, the lawn jarts, absolutely. Did anyone use um, the, the OG Shrinky Dinks? See, the problem with those was that they required you to, um, they required you to have your parents like use the oven or whatever, and I was always like, I don't know. Bakes, yeah, 75 watt bulb. Yeah, I had a chemistry set. That was a lot of fun. The chemistry set was fun. I also had and still have from Radio Shack the like 80 in one, and then they had a 25 in one. They had 160 in one electric uh, kits. Uh, like the, you know, the, um, like you can do all these things and they have all these springs and you could make all different stuff like radio and alarm clock and stuff like that. I had a ton of fun with that. I had this, <laughs> I had this dumb idea once which I talked about and I've talked about on stream before where I, I was like you could make an alarm that would sound if the circuit was broken and I'm like aha I'm like I'm gonna set up alarms so if anyone comes into my room I will know because the alarm will go off and so I put this I would like go to bed at night and I set up the whole thing and put it in front of my door except that the problem is you have to pull the wire out of the actual spring on the device so like you would the the burglar in this theory of mine you would trip over the electric kit long before they'd be like whoops i accidentally pulled the wire out like it was just not i did not i did not think it through at that time easy bake light bulb just got hot enough to slow cook a brownie yeah 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 but it actually worked right like i used to think that there was no way that thing could work but i guess it actually did Okay, last call. Easy bake oven. Smurf shrinky dinks. Yeah. And then you could make them into like keychains and stuff, right? 
I never, I, because I never had a shrinky dink. I just had friends who used these. Oh, man. I remember the uh, mid 80s obsession with uh, scratch and sniff stickers. I had a book where I collected all these scratch and sniff stickers. And oh, man. What the hell? They, they used to, there, and like everybody did that at the time. Everybody did that at the time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I guess it did actually work. Easy bake oven. Yeah. A candy and can I turn your mouth blue like ink? Yeah, I remember, yo, yeah, man, some of the old candies. And a lot of them are still around today. Nerds, everlasting gobstoppers. We had the, uh, obviously, the ring pops. You know, all that stuff is still around. Feet, skunks, yep. My favorite, I think, was either the strawberry, which I remember was like this really awesome smelling strawberry, or vanilla. And then they had other ones that were like sweaty socks. I'm like, this smells terrible. Why do I want? Okay, we're going to take the bronze ring. You pick up the ring and slip it into your pocket. It is of no use for magic and will not be worth anything, and yet it may be useful somewhere. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay. Which means now... We have taken the bronze ring. Okay, so... Here we go, chat. Now what do you want to do? We can count the doors, open a random door, cast one of the spells that you see listed, or make a move. To save confusion, I put make a move first, um, but you can do any of those. So dollar sign, vote space, two is count the doors, three is open a random door, four and then four and basically four through nine, four through ten is cast spells, or you can, uh, as I say, make a move is dollar sign, vote space, one. It's where your necklaces come from. Yeah, garbage pail kids. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, I remember the stained glass thing. I only ever saw one person with that. And I, I thought that was the coolest freaking thing. And like that is all like pre-Perler Beads things, right? Because my daughter was really into Perler Beads, but I feel like that was much later. And my son has done some Perler Bead stuff, but I feel like that was much later, like it started much later. I don't remember that as a kid, the Perler Beads thing. But I remember the beads in a metal cut. I remember seeing that once, thinking that was super cool. Yeah. You remember the um, the things that you would put in water, like the like, the, and they still have these today, do. But I mean, like at the time, they had them all over the place, like the dinosaurs and different things that you could put in water, and they would like expand to some ridiculous size. But it was always then they got really disgusting because they were filled with all this water and they'd kind of break apart or whatever. But it was like, watch them grow in front of your eyes, type of thing. I had sea monkeys. I had uh, I had a sea monkey race course even. They were so nasty. Yeah, exactly, Emily. Yep. Oh, man, the sea monkeys. I remember that too. Yep. We used to do the races for sea monkeys. They used to sell, uh, they used to have advertisements for sea monkeys in Boy's Life. I remember. And then much, much later, we had laser tag. Oh, yeah. All right, so get your vote in, chat, while we're here. We are obviously having fun talking about other stuff, too, but get your vote in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. They had the sea monkey ads. They had um, they had those. They had the, the x-ray glasses, you know, which were like, you know, these work perfectly. They'll completely, you can see through anything. And I was like, okay. All right, so we have one vote for make a move, one, two votes now for make a move, one vote for far, one vote for how. Because we don't know where we're making a move to yet exactly. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> oh, my God. That <laughs> That's really funny, Rudinell. And also disturbing. <laughs> Oh man, there was one of those that I remember reading about that that they you would like it could grow to that size, but then it could also shrink again, like they would dry out. Did anyone ever have? They had these. Um, they have these still around too, of course. These sticky spiders, like these things that had this really sticky stuff, and they were like wall walkers. You would throw them against a wall, and they would like basically walk down the wall 
because they would stick and like roll down. And then you could you could actually revive them because they would get dirty, obviously, and get like d dust and stuff. But you could wash them in the sink. You could rinse them out and then they would get sticky again. The octopus things. Yeah. And one of my favorite things that I had actually when I was a kid was the parachutist, the the like the paratrooper guy that would, you know, be the one that you could actually toss and then it would like the parachute would come up and and you know, later on I got into model rockets and all that stuff, but that was much later, but I had those for sure that I loved as well. And of course threw them way up beyond where they were supposed to be so they got stuck on the roof and, you know, things like that. All right, last call, last call. Yeah, the octopus thing. Okay, let us make a move. The quicker you get out of this space, but there are eight doorways and all are open, but how to pick one? Uh, okay, we can't find anything through our doors. Well, okay, so I guess what that means is so we want to clear this because apparently we can't. So, there we go, chat. All right, I'm going to get rid of one of them because uh, because otherwise it doesn't it doesn't work properly. Oh, that's okay. You'll, sorry, Prince Justin, you get one here. So count the doors, open a random door, or cast a spell. And you can see the spells that are there. Don't vote for one, please, That's because that's the make-a-move one, and it's not letting us do that until we find some way to get our bearings. So, <laughs> That's funny, Rudno. Yeah, the thing's walking down the wall. Yeah. That's funny. Our guy, I see our science teacher used to do stuff like this all the time. Mr. Messier. Oh man. They they tort those kids tortured him but immeasurably, but he was a physics teacher and he did this very cool like thing where he again, the 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 craziness of the 80s. They had this bed of nails. And he laid down on the bed of nails. He put on these special goggles. He held up like a cinder block, like on his body. And Mr. Oh, God, I only remember his first initial was Mr. Z. I don't remember what his last name was. But he came up as this big, burly dude. And he had a sledgehammer. And he came up and literally, Mr. Messier laid back on the bed of nails, holding up the cinder block. And uh, Mr. Z, whatever his last name was, I can't remember, used the ha the sledgehammer to break the cinder block. And because, of course, the energy is diffused over all the nails, it means your body does not get hurt. In fact, the only thing that hurt him is that a piece of the cinder block kind of cut his cheek or whatever. But it was it was like uh, everyone in the class was like, oh. Like it was really, it was very impressive. And they brought in all the science classes to watch it at once because he didn't want to do the experiment multiple times a year. But it was like, no joke. Yay, Vance is back from Europe. Okay, sounds good, Emily. <laughs> That's funny, Triffid. More weight. Oh, uh, yeah, the Crucible. Yep. Yep. But that was with the board on top and the stone on top of that. So, with only one nail on the board. Yeah, exactly. He would never do that, right? Exactly. Okay, last call, last call, chat, last call. All right, open a random door. You go over to a door at random and pull it open, but the towers and courtyards have vanished. You find yourself looking out across a deep, deep drop, the wind tugging at your cloak. Far below, birds circle at the base of a crevice, and what looks like a lynch bug is at work building a nest of spit and stone. You step quickly back and immediately lose track of which door that one was. Uh, so, all right, so Chad, I'm going to give you an option. It's a very simple choice. Open another door or cast a spell. Dollar sign vote space one means we open a door. Dollar sign vote space two means you cast a spell. 
And we'll talk about what spell if you choose to do that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was, you know, it, we, we, it was a time where apparently they just, they were like, yeah, it's okay to put children at risk. <laughs> I don't know. It was very woof. All right, so get your votes in, chat. Dollar sign vote space one means we open another door. Dollar sign vote space two means we cast a spell. Get your votes in. Vote early. Vote often. All right, I'm going to last call this. Going once, going twice, and closed. Okay, we are going to... Oh, sorry, Waymond. Sorry. I, I think you would have been outvoted in this case anyway. You pick another door and pull it open. You find yourself on the path through the northern passage of Annaland. The sightmasters are gathered around, discussing something in hushed low voices. Look at the settlement. This is no illusion and no trick. You are looking out through the door of the hut of the chief mage on the northern passage of Annaland. The sightmasters are clearly worried about something. Okay, look at the sightmasters. The group are arguing over what they should do to defend the wall. It seems they have no superior officer and no one is in charge. You cannot help noticing how empty the settlement is, as though everyone has retreated. If this truly is a door to Annaland, you cannot afford to step through it. You move back before you lose the way to return, and the door is lost amongst the others. Hmm, alright. So again, I'm going to open up that vote again, chat. Yeah. Dollar sign vote space one. It is a very creepy place. I agree. Dollar sign vote space one is open another door. Dollar sign vote space two is cast a spell. So we've had a tower of time. We've had a tower of like multiple choices. I mean, we do have um, how would allow us to cap find safe passage. We also have far would let us see the future. So we do have some spells that might help us with this if, if we need them. Um, yeah, tower of space. I feel like each of these towers has had a theme. I don't know what the one with the goblins was, the Tower of Death or something. Um, there was the Tower of the Ram, that stone ram that tried to destroy us that we managed to barely get through. Right. I could see that, Pandora, yeah. Tower of Green Long Ham. <laughs> Tower of Delicious Cinnamon Bun. That's a tower I could get behind. Tower of Power. You open the door and you just hear, What is hip? Bam! Ba -na -na -na. Tower of Defense. You get in there and immediately it's zombies, plants versus zombies. Watchtower and Jehovah's Witnesses show up. Or if you go next to the door, Prince Justin, and go along the Watchtower, Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix both show up. All along the Watchtower. Good night, Configuration Queen. Each tower holds an infinity stone. <laughs> Beauty to the thief. To find some relief. Do -do 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 Bow. Sleep well, CQ. 
All right, we're tied up, chat. What is it going to be? Open another door or cast a spell? Get those votes in. Get your votes in, chat. Door. Well, did you get, did you vote? Oh, you did vote. Okay. Last call. Going once. Going twice. I'm liking these random doors. All right. You pick another door and pull it open. You find yourself stepping out from an iron door which slams shut behind you. It takes a moment to realize where you are. The base of the inner tower. The what now? Uh... What? Oh. We're here? Oh, snap. We got into the inner courtyard. Wow. Okay. The sun disappears heading towards the horizon. This is the east side of a wide courtyard that sits below the central tower of Mampang. Guards mill this way and that. A short distance away, a wide set of steps lead up to the tower doors. That was awesome. An iron door leads south out of the courtyard and a door leads away into a nearby turret. Okay, I'm going to look up at these first. Look up at the dark tower. You crane your neck to look up at the inner tower. The very top is hidden from sight by the lower floors which jut out and seem older and in worse repair. Despite the impressive doors at the top of the steps, no one goes in or out. These are the Throben doors themselves, no doubt. The place seems as closed off and remote as an island. Okay. Look at the turret door. The door is marked with a small brass plaque. <clears throat> this is the office of the commander of the guard. You can see lantern light flicking through the grimy windows. Okay, look at the steps. Looking at the steps from here, they seem wide enough to ride an oliphant up to the archmage's doorstep. Okay, so an iron door leads south out of the courtyard. Door leads away into a nearby turret. So we have two choices, chat. Dollar sign vote space one is we open the iron door which I would gather would lead south out of the courtyard, and dollar sign vote space two means to make a move. So I'm guessing that the iron door leads down here. This is where the iron door would be. I don't know if we want to do that or not, but that would be there. Dollar sign vote space, that would be dollar sign vote space, what did I say, one? Dollar sign vote space two would be to make a move, and at that point I assume we'd be able to maybe go here or maybe here. Or here, or we could try to go up here to these Throben doors. The Archmage is somewhere up here, but like, that's pretty wild that we went in here and they just randomly showed up here. That is interesting. So, yeah, so dollar sign vote space one is the iron door, which I assume goes down this way. Dollar sign vote space two is uh, make a move. That's wild. At first, I thought we were stuck. Because I didn't see where the movement flag was. I'm like, well, what? where do we go? And then all of a sudden it's like this. I'm like, uh. <laughs> oh, cool. So you did get something. That's awesome, Emily. That's awesome. All right, last call, last call. <laughs> Going once. Going twice. All right, we're going to make a move. You know what to do now, make a move. You want it. The steps to the inner door are right in front of you. There is nothing stopping you climbing them and taking a look at the Throben doors for yourself. Okay, so, so basically, chat, we have two choices here. Dollar sign vote space one means we go to the courtyard. Dollar sign vote space two means we go to the commander's office. The commander of the guard is right here. Just be aware, if we go into the commander's office, we better have a good excuse as to why we're going there. So dollar sign vote space one is we go into the courtyard. Dollar sign vote space two is the commander's office. Yeah, the cats were like, hey, what's going on? 
Who is this guy? So yeah, so dollar sign vote space one is uh, the courtyard. Dollar sign vote space two is the commander's office. One courtyard, two commander's office. One courtyard, two commander's office. Get your votes in now. And remember, chat, I have a feeling we got some kind of weird permadeath thing going on here somehow, so... Very interesting path that we took here. We started here, we went across here, took the snake across this area, came up here, went over here, traveled down here, went to the uh, the chasm where we found the, the creatures of the dead, came up here, went back, took out some guards, came up here, took a brief uh, detour here, then came back over to the left, waited until we got through here, Came here, tried to climb some boxes. Guards got ready to throw us out, but then we used a spell to float. Came back in here. Came over here, came through. Fought a snake in here. Went through, lost our god, got more stamina. Came in here. Walked down this way. Entered this weird tower place. Had the whole cannibal tower thing. Then the weird time... First, uh, the stone ram thing. Then the weird cannibal goblin thing. Then the time thing. Then the tower of many doors thing. And now we're up here. Concerns me too. That concerns me. The lack of food concerns me. Although, you know, Commander Dunsell, before, like I said, when we started the book, uh, we were at 18 stamina was our maximum. So actually 14 out of 18 might not look so problematic. Part of the reason it's there is because of the whole, you know, we got up to 22 stamina. But in general terms, yeah. I've seen better situations. I know, right, Dunsel? Game's not messing around. Sorry. Itchy nose. Okay. All right, so we are going into the courtyard. You step out into the center of the square, nervous at how exposed you seem. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Thick, oily smells drift from a building to the north. But the most impressive sight here is the deep, towering flight of steps that leads up towards a door in the inner tower itself. On the other side of the yard is a large block of wood. The block of wood is crisscrossed with incisions and stained a deep purple color. Its use is clear enough. The executioner seems to have left his skull cap on the block. A patrol of guards tramps across the square and through the iron door to the south. Okay, for this one, I'm going to, even though normally I would look at everything, I'm going to open this up. Now, we do not have a skull cap. I don't think... Actually, wait. Let me check. Let me check on that. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to open this. We take the skull cap, look at the steps, or make a move. I'm leaving this open only because the taking the skull cap thing uh, may be something that people will want to do. But I want to check this quickly because... Yeah, we do not. The skull cap is usable for some of our spells, chat. Some of our spells do require a skull cap. So that is useful. I don't... The fact that the guards tramped across the square and through the iron door to the south means probably I think we're okay in grabbing it now while they're gone, but, like, we we do use the skull cap for certain spells. I think that actually... I think what that does is I think that is for telepathy. I think... Or it allows you to read people's minds. I don't remember exactly, but...
Last call, last call. I wonder how random that tower with the doors was. I wonder if it was just complete luck that we ended up here. All right, looks like we want to try to do that. You take the black skull cap from the block, it should serve for spellcasting, indeed. This close to the steps, you can see they are wide black slabs of stone carved with ornate symbols. They rise steeply enough that one could not run up them, and a shorter man than you might have to scramble. No one goes near them. Clatters and shouts emerge from a turret on the far side of the square. Time to continue. After a month of walking, you have finally come in sight of your goal. The great sealed Throben doors stand before you at the top of the stairs. Interesting. Okay, now... There is a mess hall, and we do need food. I imagine Mrs. Dunsell has already preset her vote for this. Um, but I don't know whether we're going to be exposed to soldiers there. So there is several options here, chat. We're eventually going to have to go up those steps if... Excuse me. If we can even open them. Um, but we've got... Should we go to the mess hall? Should we go up the steps? Or should we go to the east side... Which I guess is near the commander's area. So dollar sign vote space one means we go over to the mess hall. Maybe we get some food there. Maybe we're exposed to some soldiers, but, you know, maybe we get some food there. Dollar sign vote space two is the steps that leads us up here. We do have to go through those Throben doors eventually. Dollar sign vote space three is the east side. And I wonder if that, because it said the curse of Throben was upon us, I wonder if uh, that once we've done the thing with the hourglass, if that means that we can now go through these doors, if that was part of what we needed. I don't know the answer to that, obviously, but I'm wondering. <laughs> food! F-O-O-D, F-O-O-D, food, food. Last call, last call. I'm wondering about it because remember Throman was so Throben was a necromancer and we actually chatted with him um, we met him and he talked a little bit about some of the aspects of the doors so I'm wondering if we needed to lose the immortality to access the doors which is fascinating if that's true Prince Justin but we still don't know yet I still kind of have a read that that was the right thing to do but I don't know I'm, as, as Arudinel said, the writing in that section, that particular section, wasn't great, which stands out because so much of this game is so well written. But the mechanic of it may be very cool, depending on how things break. So, All right, going once. Going twice. All right. All right, we're going to go to the mess hall. <laughs> Ruled by our stomach. The sun lowers towards the horizon. It will be dark soon. You approach a large, noisy building. It is the guard's mess hall. The building is large, with one side open to the elements. Inside, tables are packed with guards of all stripes. Beast men, orcs, and humans all hunch over bowls of stew. They are also scattered around the mess hall, staggering with drink. Serving goblins rush to and fro, avoiding the kicks and jeers of guards. You could try entering the mess hall, but it will be walking into a viper's nest. Oh, man, chat. Uh, oh, that this should say the courtyard, not the east side, but you get the idea. <laughs> this is very, very, like, Danger Will Robinson here. I, I don't know. I mean, yes, we need food, but not, I don't know. We're walking into a hall filled with guards. And if we get this wrong, we are not immortal anymore. I I don't know. I mean, the thing is, we can we did eat today, I'm pretty sure. Um I think. But there's no taking this back, is the thing. If we choose wrong. And there's the steps, too. I mean, we do need to eventually get up these steps into these doors. So, I don't know. And if we go to the courtyard, by the way, that's just bringing us back this direction where we then have to decide if we want to leave the area, which seems a little 
counterproductive now that we got here. Or we'd have to go into the commander's quarters, which is also risky. I don't know. I'm like super aware now of the whole death thing. I'm just like, ah. So. I will move that so people can see. Yeah, the commander has some good snacks. Yeah, when my daughter was making uh, her class choices, they had all kinds of snacks there. They had, like, Oreos, they had chips, they had uh, pretzels, they had water, they had all this, they had juice. I was like, what the heck? They were very, yeah. Better to fight than a mess hall full. Yeah, I'm very worried about the mess hall. I, I have an image of the all, like, I will not influence chat, except to say that the mess hall worries me. Just because of the situation, like, we, you know, we're not obviously going to fight off all those guards, so. So the steps of the courtyard to me, but. Last call, last call. It's a very tough call. I could see this going either way. Maybe the thought is we go to the commander's quarters. If we have to fight them, maybe we're only fighting one person, and that's more capable than fighting a whole mess hall full of people. And maybe then we get to sleep there. But then I also see a scenario where we walk in there, and all of a sudden he sounds the alarm and we're screwed. Like, you added all 20 April events. Wow. Thank you, Triffid. I Again, I... I'm I'm gonna have to check out later on. I I hope that it was not like super difficult. Gotta make sure I got my pin up close and personal. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, going once, going twice. All right, courtyard by Marriott. You step back out into the courtyard proper. The sun is almost set and the sky has turned a deep purple. Soon it will be dark once more. The steps to the tower loom large. On the other side of the yard is a large block of wood. You must keep going. The tall stairs await you. Wow. So, okay, well this is pretty simple. Um, we're just going to open up a... Oh yeah, amen to that, Rudno. All right, so dollar sign vote space one is the steps. Dollar sign vote space two is the east side, which I guess would be the iron door. But again, I would really question that because that's leaving the courtyard or going into this turret to talk to uh, deal with the commander. Dollar sign vote space one is the steps. That's here. Dollar sign vote space two is east side. I'm not going to do the mess hall because we just voted against the mess hall. So dollar sign vote space one is the steps to go up to the Throben doors. Dollar sign vote space two is the east side to go towards the towards this tower with the commander thing. I don't know that they are. The, I mean, they might be, Emily, but I don't know. I can't get a read on this at all. The game has been very good at sometimes doing head fakes where you feel like you're being led in a direction, but you're not. Or it, it's not, it doesn't, it very rarely screws you over. It's more like, okay, that was a cool choice. And now there's whole new vista of things that happen, you know? You think that commander has snacks? Well, then, you know, if you believe the commander has snacks, vote accordingly. I can't, yeah, but I can't get a read on it. I Maybe. It may well be leading. I can't tell. I can't tell. It does say something that we broke through the Throben thing and now we're standing in front of the Throben doors, but maybe that's just me kind of playing that out. Again, this is not at all in the books. Like, we are way beyond the books So I at this point, so I don't know. 
Yeah, the courtyard is two. Well, no, we're no, we're in the courtyard. The east side is two. So dollar sign vote one is the steps. Dollar sign vote space two would be east side, which is basically the iron door going out of the courtyard. But that doesn't make any sense to me. Or doing the guard tower, uh, the um, commander of the guard thing over here. That's super cool. How did you get the images up there? And are you able to like copy and paste with this? I love those images. It looks really cool. Okay, I'm going to last call this. Dollar sign vote space one is the steps. Dollar sign vote space two is the east side. Going once. Going twice. Once. Twice. Three times a chat vote. All right, we're going to go to the east side. Wait, what? You hurry from the center of the square to the east side. Night has fallen. You should try to find a place to sleep, especially on an empty stomach. You stand in the shadow of the tall tower. An iron door leads south out of the courtyard, and a door leads away into a nearby turret. Okay, so choices here would be to sleep here in the courtyard. That seems freaky. Um, open the iron door. That's the thing that leads south out of the courtyard. I think that's not a great idea, honestly. Or to make a move. And make a move would basically be to move back to the steps or to move into the commander's tower, I think. Oh, cool. No, that's neat, Trip. That's awesome. So dollar sign vote space one is sleep here in the courtyard. What could go wrong? Dollar sign vote space two is open the iron door. And again, that's leaving the courtyard completely, which I don't know that that's a great idea. Dollar sign vote space three is make a move. And that would mean that we would be able to either move back to the steps or we would move into the commander's tower. So that empty stomach thing must mean that we didn't eat, which is unfortunate. There's a real, it's interesting, there's a real intensity to these decisions now that it's like, oh crap, what happens if we're wrong type of thing. And I remember reading that there was something that uh, the fourth book, the fourth game did that changed things around considerably. And I wonder if that's what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, once, twice. All right. We're going to try to sleep here. You look around the square, but it doesn't look like a good place to sleep. The guards would pick you up in a moment. Oh, okay. All right. Well, so much for that idea. So dollar sign vote space one means open the iron door. That takes us south out of the courtyard, though. Dollar sign vote space two is make a move, which means we could go into the tower or we could go up the steps. So dollar sign vote space one to open the iron door to lead us south out of the courtyard and leave totally. Or uh, dollar sign vote space two if you want to make a move, which is either steps or tower. He 
you can hear the crickets and everything. I think it's time to step up. Last call, last call. Going once. Going twice. All right, you know what to do now. Make a move. There's only one way to go, up to the inner tower and the Throbin doors. Oh. Okay, well now it is telling us which way to go because we can't actually go there. You step out in the center of the square once more. Night is gathering all around you. Mess halls to the north. I bet they're setting this up for a reason, though, that they're doing it this way. Other side of the yard is a large block of wood. Night air is cool and good for walking. The tall stairs await you. All right. Well, we've already done the others, so now we're going to do the steps because that's obviously what leads us there. You make your way up to the base of the great steps that lead up to the central tower. Moonlight covers everything. The steps are wide and central. You have a view across the whole of the guard's courtyard and are equally visible. You lift your eyes upward to the famous Throbin doors that protect the Archmage from Mampang, or the other way around, perhaps. They are impressive, certainly, but not seem fearsome. They have no teeth and no claws. Whoops. Okay. We have got some spells, chat. Sorry. My bad, my bad. I wanted to make sure I had it the right order. Okay. Cast a spell. So, we have got T, U, O, Sus. I bet everything is going to be dead. It's like casting magic in a wizard's tower, like, cast detect magic. It, yet, the answer is yes. Um, all right, cast Sus. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load, I'm gonna load my spell list. Because I bet I can get a lot of these, so. Sus is there, Sap is there. Uh, let's see. Is Dope there? Dope is not there. So, I can get rid of that one. Yeah, this will be faster. Nope, I don't want S or T. There we go. Top! What the hell is that? Cast top? That's an unknown spell. Okay, I don't know what that means. Uh interesting. Wow, okay. Ah uh, yes, protect from magic. Maybe because of the hourglass. It could well be. It could well be, yeah. Madge protects us from magic, requires one stamina. Uh, we did sus already. Yaz causes invisibility, requires a pearl ring, which we don't have. Yap lets us talk with animals. I don't know if there's any animals around here, though. That's a green wig. It's free to do it, but... I don't know that it does anything for us. Uh, Z. A. P. Creates lightning. I think I have Zap there somewhere. Yep. Or we could do Z. I. P. Which is teleportation, and I think I have that on there, too. Yep. Requires a green ring. Uh, let's see. Far, that's the see the future thing. And we do have that. Oh, I already did that. Okay. Okay. So, we do not have res. We do not have how. 
And this is not an option for us. Okay. Okay, so Tot writes so that, does that. Okay, here we go, chat. So dollar sign vote space one is cast top. That's unknown. We don't know what that does. Madge protects from magic one stamina. Sus sense danger one stamina. Sap cause depression one stamina. Zip cause teleportation. That's for free because we have the green ring. Uh, zap is cause lightning three stamina. I have no idea what we would do that. Cast yap is talk with animals. I don't know if there's any animals around here, but again, we have the green wig, so whatever. Cast far lets us see the future. We do have a crystal ball, so we could do that for free. Or climb or back away are the options that we have. See, a lot of people are going on top. I don't know what top is. I've never heard of that before. Chad is very intrigued in this, this unknown spell. My experimental uh, chat folks here. When in doubt, vote for the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. We're adventurous. I, that, listen, that's a good thing. All right, I'm not even going to last call this. Push the shiny button. All right, chat, here we go. We have no idea what this does, but we're going to do it. T. O. P. Let's do it. You try to bind the enchantment, but you are missing an item that it needs, and so the spell dissipates around you. Okay. So it does something, but we don't have the item for it. Interesting. Okay. Sort of? Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what that spell would maybe we get the item later or something, I'm guessing. Uh There we go. It's called Psych. <laughs> All right, so now here you go, chat. So again, cast a spell. We're not going to cast top because we can't use it. So we can cast far, see the future. Madge, protect from magic, cost of stamina. Sus, uh, sense danger, one stamina. Sap, cause depression. I don't know why we would do that, but whatever, one stamina. Zip, cause teleportation. We do have a green ring. Um, zap, cause lightning, three stamina. That would not be wise, I think. Yap, talk with animals. We do have a green wig. I don't know if there's animals around here, but whatever. Or climb or back away. So go ahead and get your vote in now interesting so there's a spell called top and we don't know what it does i'm almost positive there's no top spell in the original uh in the original books i'm almost positive so that is an inkle innovation All right, we have two votes for climb or back away. Do I have other people weighing in on this? Cast a spell or climb or back away. Get your votes in now. Dollar sign, vote space. One for far, two match, three sus, four sap, five zip, six zap, seven yap, or eight climb or back away. I want to see the future. Bring me to the future. The future will feature many. In the year 2000. 
the year 2000. Okay. Uh, last call. Going once. Going twice. Did you really? <laughs> the year 2000. That was really funny. Sat in the salad days of uh, Conan. That's an anime? Foot Charisma H. Future. Foot, foot. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Exactly. Okay. All right, we're going to climb or back away. Your heart is in your mouth. The inner sanctum lies within reach. You make your way one by one up the enormous steps. The tower looms above you like never before. Each step is carved with a word in the oldest tongue, spelling out a message for those who approach the dark heart of Mampang. The message is spelled out one pictographic word at a time, one per step. Those who climb must comprehend, enter, or else ne'er descend. The symbols chosen are unusual, they are all the same viewed from either direction. No, just a bad joke. I Yeah. I, I figured in the end, I was like, maybe that's what that means. All right. So, easy poll, chat. Dollar sign vote space one means we turn back. Dollar sign vote space two means we keep climbing. Oh, look. It's the interior. <gasps> it's the interior. Sorcerer's spine. Or no, sorcerer's... Is that spine or spike? Looks like sorcerer's spike. Looks like I can't tell if that's a K or an N. Wow, that's the interior. What? Press enter? What do you mean? Yeah, I was trying to think about that myself, about where we got comprehend for. They've prepared a spike for you. Yeesh. I love cutaway maps. I like maps in general. Look at this. Oh, man. <laughs> Go back and read the translated words. Those who climb must comprehend, enter or else ne'er descend. Reverse, like, read them backwards. Descend, ne'er, or else enter. Comprehend must climb, who climb those. So the idea being that we can't descend. What? Oh. You know what? Look, Commander Nunsel, all right? Listen. Look, we're, look, we're trying to save Annaland here, all right? We're trying to sit. We are doing this for Annaland, and you're, you're here making jokes about feet and... How about a little, how about a little of that legendary Dunsel focus, Okay. <laughs> All right, going once. I'm going to last call this here. Dollar sign vote space one is turn back. Two is keep climbing. But it sounds to me, based on what we're reading, is like you have to keep climbing. If I'm reading this properly. But I don't know. I may well be not reading it properly. <laughs> going once. Going twice. Okay. 
All right, we're going to keep climbing. You steady your nerve and continue to climb. About halfway up, you are arrested by a shout from below. You, where are you going? Oh, crap. Oh, boy. Um, a guard. Turn and look. Run for it. Symbols are a palindrome? They are? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, because the symbols. Okay, I thought you meant, like, actually in the translation. Yeah, they're the same. Yep, yep. No, I gotcha. Well, chat, we gotta be really careful here. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe we have to book it up there I don't I don't know I have no idea turn and look run for it or come back down I have no I have no idea the chat is on its own here I have no idea what to do zero idea Turn and look, run for it, or come back down. Yeah, I mean, he's like, right, we turn around and it's just like, um, hello, friend. If you want to get through the doors, my name is <laughs> like. Hello, I'm Gandalf, and let me help you. <laughs> My name is Joe, the pizza delivery guy, and I have here a pepperoni pizza for you. Let's call. Turn around, bright eyes. Every now and then I turn apart. Every now and then I climb some stairs. And I need to throw open doors. Okay. <clears throat> uh, right, we're going to turn and look. You turn to see a guardsman hurrying across the courtyard, waving furiously at you. Stop, get down here, he exclaims. Ooh, uh... Come and get me. That's brazen. Although maybe he won't come up because he's afraid of it. Ignore the guard. Run for it. Come back down. Interesting. I could see an argument for all of these because one of the things it says is like enter or else never descend. So you can't descend. Or it's dangerous to descend. Exactly. He doesn't want us freeing the... Yep, that's right. The Mampang guy. Interesting. So what do we say, chat? <laughs> Emily. Uh, uh. <laughs> Once upon a time I was in Mampang Now the steps are falling apart I don't even have a god Total eclipse of the game We become the next man pan guy. <laughs> Mucor's in my nose. <laughs> the 
genie in a bottle. You are the Archmage. Plot twist. We actually are the Archmage this whole time. <laughs> and we've been hurrying back to find ourselves. That was your lyric from earlier, Mucor's in my nose. <laughs> Only mucus in my nose. No, I do remember Mucor now. That was from like, that was from a couple of sessions of this ago, right? If I recall correctly. Also, we are tied up, chat. Nothing I can say. Total eclipse of the game. An Archmage. <laughs> exactly. Magical Foot Doctors. We have full arch support. We cast Plantar Fasciitis. All right, chat, we need someone to vote here or change their vote. Something else, we are tied up. We are deadlocked. So we need someone else to change their vote. You just want to taunt the guard. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, going once. Going twice. All right, we're going to ignore the guard. Without bothering to turn around, you continue climbing the steps. The guard shouts after you, but it seems does not dare to follow. You reach the top of the steps without incident. Aha. All right, by the doors. You stand by the colossal doors at the top of the stairs. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. A silence descends as though this was a quieter corner of the city than any other. Perhaps it has something to do with the doors themselves. Certainly a heavy magic exudes from them. You look around the step a little and notice something etched into the stone. It reads, Mampang will be free. Below that are two S's entwined, and near them two C's. The doors look simple enough, if large. The large wooden panels are covered in ornate carvings. Someone has left a pack here by the door. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Let me look at the pack, at least. Perhaps someone else tried to open these doors once. The pack lies discarded just to one side of the steps. It is a little charred. All right, let's do this first, chat. Oh, that's wild. That's pretty cool, Rudnell. Although when I first read it, I thought you said he found a cursed clown and used it to end all war. And so the next couple of sentences were a bit confusing to me until my brain caught up. <laughs> all right, so here we go. So again, now we do have the holy water. And remember, we did hear about this as one of the clues uh, from the dead uh, by Mampang, you know, that we found outside. So... You like my version even better? So look under the pack, open the pack, or leave it. And while you're doing that, while you're voting there, I'm going to take a look quickly and see our clues. All right. The ghosts in the Argbad vent claim holy water is the key to the tower, but it cannot be that simple. But we do have holy water. We have two doses of it, actually. If the pack is what we need to cast top, it's possible. I worry about the fact that it's charred. But that may be because they screwed up with the doors. I mean, it probably doesn't hurt us to at least open the pack, I imagine. 
I don't know what look under the pack is about either. That man, these choices. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can see that. Okay, last call. Last call. I'm waiting. No, I'm waiting. I'm I'm we're tied up anyway, so I'm I'm all good. Hmm. <laughs> LOL is that I, but, <laughs> but like, it's not, okay, you're right. It does say that it is indeed lol. I don't know what we do with that though. What if it said, um, look under the pack, make a move, ask your God for assistance, open the door. Just saying. <laughs> Clearly being trolled. Lol. Maybe that means we leave. I don't know. He's returned. He's returned to. Uh, yes. Vance has returned to the glory of um, regular existence. All right, well, we're tied up, chat. Look under the pack is two. Open the pack. It is indeed April 1st. April, a April, come she will. What is it? When restless streams are swollen with rain, may she will stay. I don't think I'm doing that right. I, I need to. It's been a while since I've heard that song. August, die she must. I know that one. <laughs> yeah, if you want to, do you want to change your vote there, Prince Justin? All right, going once, going twice. Okay, gingerly you flip open the pack. It seems safe enough. Inside are a few glass bottles. You lift the bottles out one by one, shaking them to identify their contents. It is a set of potions. Blimberry, blessed water, fire water. Okay, so we do know what they are, so... Quick vote, chat. Dollar sign, vote space one, take the potions. Dollar sign, vote space two, leave them. If it's blessed water, that's interesting because they did tell us that holy water mattered. So if we take that, blessed water is going to be one of the holy waters, and then presumably we could pour that on the doors or do something with the holy water on the doors. Because we got that clue from, I bet, 
I bet a lot of people do not get that clue because how many people actually go to the chasm and like randomly resurrect people and then like can talk to the ghost down there? I bet we were a little unusual in the way that we did that, I think. Always label your medications. Last call, going once, going twice. Okay, we are going to take them. You stash each bottle and then step quickly away from the discarded pack. Okay, so now, here's what we've got. Trace out the carvings on the door. Open the door seems like a very bad idea just doing that. Pour holy water on the door. See, we now have, if I'm right, let me just double check. We should have now three doses of holy water. Yes, we have three measures. Three doses of holy water. So that's, okay, so we have pour holy water onto the door. I mean, that was, a, that was not an option that would have existed otherwise. Or cast a spell. <laughs> Commander Tunsil. Uh, okay. Protects from magic, one stamina. I mean, you know what? Before I even summon a goblin, we can't do that. Maybe we won't even need to do it. Let me let me just double check and see. I bet that's well, that's dock. Heal disease. Counter is hot. Um Okay, before before I do these. Well, I don't know. Part part of me, you know what? Okay, I'm going to keep I keep changing my mind. What we're going to do is I don't want to put all these spells here because the poor holy water thing may just be what people want to do to begin with. So before I start putting out the spells, normally I do add the spells, but here there's enough choices already. So trace out the carvings in the door is choice one. Open the door is choice two. I think that's maybe not the wisest idea before we do something first. Pour holy water onto the door is choice three. And then casting a spell would be choice four. My thought is the fact that there's blessed water in the pack and about the dead people that told us about holy water being key, and we now have three measures of holy water, means that it's probably reasonable, right, to do something with this. I don't know what the order is or whatever, but, like... And again, this is not at all what the... Uh, the Throben doors, I their Throben doors are definitely a thing in the book, but I don't remember how you get through the Throben doors. One of the odd things about this game is it means that the book itself is kind of blurred slightly for me. I mean, I do know about the differences. There are some areas that are just totally different, but then there are some which are sort of similar and not completely. And like, life. <laughs> Why exactly are we quoting Madonna? I hear you call my name, and it feels like, oh, just like a prayer. Ha ha. Ha ha. Like a prayer, I'll take you there. Okay, last call, last call. It's like a dream to me. All right. Here we go, chat. Let's hope we're right. 
Remembering the advice of the ghosts in the Argbad crater, you pour a vial onto the door handle. It sizzles and evaporates away as though the handle was scalding hot. I assume that's scalding hot. But nothing more happens. If holy water is needed to open the door, it is by some other means. All right, we still have two holy waters left, so that's okay. But I think crasping the handle seems a little ridiculous. Um, we know that the handle is boiling hot, so that's not a good idea. Bang on the door also seems wise. Not wise, rather. Okay, so now I will actually put this out there. Oh, really, Emily? <laughs> Did you do so from La Isla Bonita? Okay, so that's Doc. Right, that's to heal disease, which doesn't make any sense here. Well, actually, 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 actually. So, okay. This, to me, feels... Raw. I, I don't. I don't want to push people in this direction because I think this may not be right at all. But this does heal disease and counters hot. I guess it's possible that this thing could fireball us and this would counter it. But I. I don't know. That that still feels like that's a. That's very shaky to me. Because it doesn't counter like things being hot. I don't know about that. Um, I guess that was D. All right, Zen. That's hover in air. Um, that I don't know what good that does us, but it's free to do, I guess. Um. Zob summons a rock demon. We do not have a rock demon's tooth. Um, zip is causes teleportation. Because we have a green ring. Okay, we did Zob, we did Zen. Okay. Uh, Madge, I think, is protecting us from... Protects us from magic, yes. Uh, gob, we can't cast. That summons a goblin, but we don't <clears throat> have a goblin's tooth, so we can't do that. Um... How is find safe passage. That's one stamina. Hot creates a fireball. We would fireball the door. Seems not likely. Um, okay. M, H, Z. Okay, I think that's all there is. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Let me check. How counters... Fix, which is like something that holds you in place, a spell that holds you in place. All right, so this is curious, chat. We can trace out the carvings on the door. We can bang on the door, which seems, I don't know, that seems a little risky. Grasp the handle, which we know is now scorching hot, so maybe that's a bad idea. Uh, cast a spell. We can cast Dock. 
heal disease. I mentioned that it counters hot, but again, I feel like that's real shaky because it's not really a fireball, so I don't think that's right. Cast Zen is hover in air. I don't know what good that does us, but whatever. Cast Zip causes teleportation. I guess we could teleport through the door, but it seems like that's, I don't know, something. Cast Madge, protect from magic. Okay. Um, I think that also uses a stamina, by the way, casting Madge. Cast How is find safe passage. That's one stamina. Cast Hot creates fireball, three stamina. I thought about that, Dunsel, but but Hot is literally a spell, though. Hot is, in fact, we have it here. Cast hot is create fireball. So if someone shoots a fireball at us, yeah, we can use Doc to counteract it. But this thing, I don't, I don't know that this does that. You know, Harv on a ton roof. But, you know. Okay, we have three votes for Trace Out the Carvings on the Door. One vote for Cast Doc. Four votes for Trace Out the Carvings. One vote for Cast Doc. Going once. I'm going to last call this. Yeah, I don't know. I this is all very, you know, I think we're being I think we're being quite reasonably cautious and making fairly good decisions, but it's all definitely uncertain. Going once, going twice. Okay. The carvings are of obscene distorted figures. Perhaps once beautiful, but now warped and bent by fire. In the center is a single vertical stroke. I. Warped and bent by fire. Mm. I am lost. I, I'd say, so we have bang on the door is option one. We have grasp the handle, which is, you know, as we talked about. Three times a lady. All right, chat. So here are your choices. We could bang on the door. That's choice one. Grasp the handle is choice two. Yeah, I can see that. I can and also also one of the potions now that I'm thinking about it, one of the potions that we got was Blimberry, right? So maybe we cast Doc, grasp the handle, it blows us away but doesn't. Maybe it's the order in which we use this water maybe. So that so maybe it is cast Doc. In any case, dollar sign vote space one is bang on the door, two is grasp the handle, three is hot, four is dock, five is zen, six is zip, seven is madge, eight is how, nine is move away. I mean, we don't, well, if we cast hot, do you, you didn't mean that, did you? You want to cast hot? Because dock counters hot. So if we cast dock, that will counteract hot, theoretically. You want to bang on the door? I don't want to work. I want to check Doc for a second. Counter's hot. And there's all the stuff with all the chard, the fact that it's burned and like warped and all that stuff. I don't know. And Doc counteracts it. Well, all right. So, so here's here's my thought process. Like, 
I, you know, banging on the door is certainly an option. We know, here's what we know. We know the handle is scalding hot. We know that from the vial of holy water. We know that uh, these, these things are incredibly magical. Doc does counteract hot. And we know that people have been like scarred and, you know, like all that. So, which suggests that people have been basically incinerated before. So maybe we cast Doc because we do have two doses at least of Blimberry Potion. Maybe we use that to counteract Hot. Then we can grasp the handle and then it doesn't destroy us. Or, I yeah. The vertical stroke can also be a one and banging on the door is the first option. Interesting. Yeah, Doc may be the way. So then maybe vote Doc. So cast Doc then, maybe. But I'm a little lost as to why we would cast Hot, though. I don't know why you would cast a Fireball at the Fireball. Unless, Arudno, you're thinking maybe, like, uh, sort of like reverse psychology. Like, it, it's charred, so we we shoot, you know, shoot a Fireball at that. Maybe. Because I agree that there are a lot of options... I agree that there are a lot of things that indicate something about heat. And we got the set of potions. I don't know. Right, but you voted... I think you voted, though... You voted for hot, though, Arudnell. That's what confused me. You voted for hot. And I didn't know if you wanted to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I was like, wait, why? Why are you? So, yeah, I just clicked on it and it shows that you voted for hot. Number, it's four. Doc is four. And this is a guess, but one thing I think that, like, one thing I can say for sure is that we have two doses of Blimberry, so using one one of them that we just literally got from this pack, so using Blimberry doesn't, like, leave us any worse off. I just don't know if that's how you open the door. Like, this is a complete guess. Um, but there's so many clues. You said it yourself, Arudnell. There were, and I think, and Dunsel was on this the last time, there are so many clues about the whole, like, you know... The pack is a little charred, and then these carvings are beautiful but warped and bent by fire. The handle is scorching hot. Like, it all suggests that. So I don't... And the fact that there's blimberry water... Also, I just noticed this. Also, the fact that there's fire water here, too. And maybe that's also a clue about watch out for fire. I don't know. All right, last call. <laughs> All right. Die is cast. Let's do it. Let's hope we're right. In the name of Annaland. You cast the spell across your potion and it begins to glow and fizz. Oh, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Drink potion, put the potion in my pack, pour the potion on the door handle. We don't want to drink it because that heals disease. Oh, wow. I wonder if this... Okay, well, let me save this for a minute. Maybe it's the order in which you do it. So maybe we have to pour the potion on the handle. I don't know. Put the potion in my pack seems senseless. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, so 
So do we drink the potion that's dollar sign vote space one, put the potion in my pack is two, or pour the potion on the door handle? Ah. Uh, because you don't want to drink, because the thing is drinking the potion is just healing disease and that's not the issue. It's, um... Uh, counter's hot with the potion. Who? last call this is very very close but i think i think we're on the right track here chat i called string going once going twice <sighs> all right chat let's do it Pour the potion on the door handle. The potion sizzles sharply as it slicks across the handle, but it does not boil away in moments as you might have expected. After a moment, it seems to cool. Okay. I think that's good. We may have gotten something right. Do we wait? But if we wait, that may, like, go away again. Touch the handle. Or open the door. Oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> I think we got that right. I think we got that right. I think that was the right thing to do. I think we got that right. I just don't know what we do next. I'm the dying nabbit door. Razzle, 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 razzle. For glory, I know, right? It's intense, man. Going once. Hey, what's up, Crit Twitch? Welcome to a very intense Sorcery 4 session. It's been great, but it's like very like, woo. Good to see you, Crit Twitch. How are you? Going twice. Oh, woof. Okay. You grasp the door handle and turn only to be stopped short. There is no trap, no explosion, but you have not opened the door. But the door is still not open. You have survived one of its traps, but surely there will be more. Okay. You look over the door carefully. Gaze working from top to bottom. Okay. We did it. We did one. The carvings have morphed a little, now showing figures in strange frozen poses. Two vertical strokes stand side by side. Two. So we got the first step. We got the first step. So we did that. Now the second step. So we did it. We got the first step. Okay, that's that's a big deal. We got the first step. So now... Yep. It was definitely a one. Woof. Okay. So holy water is going to come into play, but maybe not yet. Let's see what we've got as options. And let's play special careful attention to what these things counteract. So we've got Gak. That counters sus.
But sus just, that's just like danger, that's just like his danger sense. So I'm not sure that that works. What else have we got? Um... Okay, so cast Illusion of, wor of Worship. That doesn't counteract anything. Um, gum counters Zip, but we don't have a Vial of Blue, so we can't do that. Alright. Um, turn to Stone. That counters fall, but I think that fall just keeps you from falling, so I don't think that necessarily is what we would want for a counteracting spell, but maybe. Um, okay. Mud creates quicksand. Not sure why we'd want to do that. Rock on. Okay, so there's mud. Uh, float in air counters rock. So rock would keep, would counteract floating in air, and floating in air obviously would counter rock, which is turning to stone. Maybe we might get turned to stone? I guess? But what do we even cast it on, though? Um... Okay, and then far... Let's see the future. That's- we can do that for free, because that's, uh, we have a crystal ball, so that's fine. Um... Kid creates illusions. That, we can do that for free too because of the bracelet of bone. I don't know what the point of that is though, and I don't think that counteracts anything that I know of. Um... D... I... M... Causes stupidity. Oh really, Hillness? Yeah, it might it might very well be. Um, we barely do uh, actually crit twitch. It's been a very strange. I mean, it, it's again, it's been a good session, but there's and I think we're kind of getting it, but we're kind of operating a bit in the dark here ourselves. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. So that's an actual game. Okay, did I get these all? I got G. Right, I got that. Uh, rock. Can we guess? Rock, yeah. Mud, yeah. Fall, yeah. Ro uh, float, yeah. Um. Actual free-to-play game on on Steam. So I don't know what to do here, chat. Um, there are some spells here which counteract others. Is it really an official Sega release? That's funny. Um, we survived one of its traps. And now we're on to part two. Part one was to counteract hot. We did that. Part two, and one of them is going to be involving holy water, but that's obviously not the step that we need yet. That might be the last step. Step three might be holy water. Frozen poses. Yeah, but we don't have anything that, that we don't, have, like hot is not one of the options though, Dunsel. That's pretty funny, Illness. I'll have to check that out. 
I mean, float in air counters rock. So maybe if it would turn us to stone, maybe fall would prevent that. Because rock prevents, rock would counteract floating in air, but I don't see that as a problem. I don't see that, what are you going to, I don't get that. Um, Gak counters, I don't remember what Gak counters actually. Um, no, this is what I'm saying. We don't have anti-petrification, which is why the cast fall thing may be as close as you're going to get. Right? Like, which is what I think Arudinel is thinking. If you cast Fall, it counteracts Rock. Maybe that means that we don't get turned to stone this time around, and maybe that's the second thing. Oh, the Frozen. That's what you mean by Frozen? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes. So then it is Fall. Then you would want to cast Fall because that counteracts Rock, and this keeps us from being turned into stone. I see what you're getting at. Yes, yes, yes. That's a good call, Arudinel. That's a good call, and you were on it too, Commander Dunsell. Yes, I see what you're saying. Everyone follow that? So fall counteracts rock, right? And what I was thinking was, well, but it's not casting the spell, but that's not the point. The, you folks were on this, which is the idea if the handle is hot, you cast something to counteract hot. In this case, the door is like the embodiment of the spell. So you cast the thing to counteract hot. So we cast dock, which counteracts hot. That allowed us, we poured it on the handle. That allowed us to get the handle. It's no longer hot. We therefore counteracted one of the things. So the second thing now is this. Looking at this carving, it shows figures in strange frozen poses as if they were turned to stone. Fall is the thing which counteracts stone. All right, sounds good. Sleep well, Wayman Wolf. Thank you as always. So, given that situation, I think you're right. It sounds to me like maybe that is the way to go. You cast Fall, that counteracts Rock. That protects us from that. And maybe the last thing is something that we have to pour holy water on the, on the handle. Or something like that. Or use holy water. So get your vote in, chat. Dollar sign vote space one is test the door handle, but be careful because if you test it, we're not supposed to do it. Like that's one of its traps. So if we test it, we might get like turned into stone again before, you know. So then cast Gak, that causes fear. Um, but again, I don't know what the point of that is. God, illusion of worship, that doesn't counteract anything. Rock turns to stone, that counteracts floating in air. And fall, which we have there, counteracts rock. So fall counteracts being turned to stone. Wait, why are you casting, why are you voting for rock, Dunsel? I don't understand. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was like, wait, what? Because for a minute I was like, oh, well, maybe you want to be the thing that it says in the carving. But then I was like, no, because the carving clearly initially shows these like burned figures. And so you didn't want to cast hot. You wanted to cast something which counteracted that. So I do think we want to counteract what the carving is showing. So I feel like the game has not done has done not very much with the whole counteracting thing, maybe once or twice throughout the whole series. So, no, I get it. I get it. And once we're through these doors or defeated by these doors, chat, that's going to end the session for tonight. A very productive one. Last call. This is very cool. This is very cool. And I think we did that that initial thing, success, was huge because it gave us the information that the one really was step one, step two, whatever, and gave us the sense that it is something to do with spells and counteractings. So, all right, going once, going twice. All right. Here we go. Time to cast fall. Counters rock. You gather the stars into your design around you, but although you complete the spell, it seems to have no effect and you do not float into the air as you'd expected. But that's the idea because of this. 
Tentatively, you reach out for the door handle, but sure enough, nothing happens. It is quite safe. Then, quite suddenly, the door shimmers and disappears from sight entirely. The passageway beyond is revealed. Okay, but wait a minute, though. Uh... Okay. So, but here's the thing, though. Does that mean... Because here's the thing. Does that mean that the holy water... That we did need to put holy water on the door and that it just wasn't the thing we needed completely? Let me go back and read. If holy water is needed to open the door, it is by some other means. Okay. Something to think about this. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know that there are clues yet. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to be very careful about this. We cast hot. No, we cast dock. We, we did not. No, we did. I guess so. Holy water. We poured. So we poured the holy water vial on the handle. It sizzled away. Then we cast dock to counter hot. Poured that on the handle. Then we just now cast fall to counter rock. Tried the handle and the door just shimmered. So, so far it's working. That part's working. Yeah, but we didn't do Doc on Holy Water, though. We used the Blimberry Potion for Doc, is what I'm saying. We used the Blimberry Potion because that's what Doc uses. So we didn't actually use Holy Water for that. No, I'm not frazzled. I'm, I'm going well. I'm just, I'm just very much like, I'm very into it, actually. And I don't want to stop now. I want to get past these doors. Like, I feel like at this point we're, we're well in order. I am not particularly tired, actually. Um... Though I appreciate your concern. Okay, toss something into the passage. Just just to get to the doors. Okay, and then cast a spell. What do we got for spells? Yes. That's right. Okay. Okay, so hot counters dock. But, I mean, I don't know why. We, we don't need to counter Doc, because Doc is peeled disease. Maybe. And that's not what this looks like. There's something about illusions. Cast hot. Fireball. We can read minds. Because we have a uh, skull cap now. I don't know what exact mind we're, we're going to read, but. Teach RPG door lift. Right, 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 exactly. And the RPG rule of three, right? There's always three things you have to beat cause invisibility, but we don't have a pearl ring and it doesn't counter anything anyway. Um. Let's see. R. Ah. Ah. Okay. So, resurrect the dead. This does require holy water. They did say that it's going to be used for this. Good night, Helmus. All right. Sounds good. Sleep well. And it does use holy water, so that may be the one that we need, chat. It may be res. It's quite possible that it's giving us that choice. Okay, cast wrap that talk all languages. That's just a spell. Um, I mean... Raz allows us to sharpen our blade temporarily, but, like, I don't know what the hell that does. 
That all that feels like red herring stuff to me. Um, wall creates an invisible wall. Okay. Wall, uh... Yeah, because these ones are so different. Um... From the other ones that we had, create explosions. We do have a pebble, but it doesn't counteract anything. We already got wall. We already got hot. And then there's S, right? Fog. What does fog do? Oh man, what does fog do? Is that darkness? That's exactly what I'm wondering. I don't know if it does. Um, and sus counters Gak, but we're not afraid here. I don't. I don't think. I don't think sus is it. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of danger, but um, okay. Is that all there is? We already did that. Woof. Um, what do we do? No. I want to take a look at the spell book. All right, let's see what fog does. This spell may only be cast in a closed room with no windows. Once cast, the room turns pitch black in the eyes of all but the caster, even though torches and candles may still be burning. Therefore, nearby creatures will be temporarily blinded. Uh... Yeah, but that's not what this is doing, though. This is an illusion, right? Um, let me just take a look quickly and see what the illusions are. What creates an illusion? Um, kid, but there's nothing to counteract kid. That doesn't sound right. That sounds like one of those things that you're, that's like, oh, it's close, but it's not quite there, you know? Um, and then the last option... is to move away. Uh, oh, sorry. is to move away. This is tough chat. Walk forwards, toss something into the passage, cast hot, cast tell, cast res, wrap, raz, wall, pop, sun, sus or move away. But the one that seems the most clear possibility to me I can understand tossing something in the passage, but I'd be a little worried about the effect of that. I don't know if this is right, but holy water was one of the things that we were told needed to be used. That's one of the clues. Um, in fact, it says, looking at the clue... First spell that locks the Throben doors is a spell of fire. The second spell that locks the Throben doors is a spell of petrification. The Throben doors are locked by fearsome magic. Yes, yes, yes. You found a glyph for that doesn't matter. Holy water is key to the tower. 
The ghosts in the Argbad vent claim holy water is the key to the tower, but it cannot be that simple. That suggests to me... Remember, when we used those other spells, they didn't work as expected. Fall didn't make us float in the air. It just allowed us to counteract the spell of rock. Dock normally is just something which would not you would counteract top by counting out to fireball. This time we poured it on the handle, which no, because that because it's not a glyph. <clears throat> the uh, glyph that we found, <clears throat> excuse me, the glyph was in that tower before, and I don't and wasn't there was nothing connected to the glyph. It was just like there was a there was a four glyph in the wizard tower, so I don't think it's connected to that. Can we cast dim? Possibly. Oh, kid was count countered by dim. Let me see. No. No, D is not an option. D is not an option. S R Y T H. The door is, I mean, the door is open, so we could toss something into the passage. That's true. Well, but don't you think the key. Don't you think the key would be, I mean, I mean, it could be a metaphorical key, right? You know? This is tough. Mm. Oh, interesting. Use the ring that we, that was used for hell. Okay, so vote for, that makes sense. So then vote for toss something into the passage then. That's a good call. Maybe that's what it's used for. We do have something that will be handy for later. I see what you're saying. It could be. So yeah, get your chotes, uh, get your, uh, get your chotes. I was going to say chat and votes and it became chotes. All right, Vat, get your chotes in. All right, chat, get your votes in. I was planning to go till one. We got seven minutes to go as soon as we get through this door. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm thinking is likely a Rudno. This is very interesting. Going to last call this. Going once, going twice. Yeah, seriously. All right, let's toss something into the passage. Yeah, I know, Trivid. <laughs> you grab a handful of dust from the step and toss it into the passage. But as you might have expected, it does not go through the opening. Instead, it bounces back from the opening and forms a rough line in the dirt where the door once stood. Okay, so so something was blocking it. Okay, sounds good, Driven. No, I wasn't going to go for super long. Just like set, I just want to get through these doors. All right, let's see if there's any other options now. Now will it let us cast dim? We have tell all there up there already. Read minds. You already have that. Uh, w A L. That's invisible wall. 
I wonder if creating an invisible wall counteracts an invisible wall. I wish I knew what counteracts an invisible wall. Yeah, this is invisibility, which we don't have a pearl ring. We have sun, which counteracts fog. Maybe it is sun. I mean... Sus counteracts Gak, but there's no fear there. Or again, we still have the resurrect the dead thing. So I think we have all of this stuff already. I think this is all the same. Charging the doorway makes no sense. We do have pop. Yeah, we do have pop. So we could cast pop, which creates explosions. We could do that. It's possible because it doesn't work exactly correctly that sun, which counteracts fog because they don't actually work exactly the same way. This is a little weird. Like, I would feel better about it if it was dim that we were casting to counteract Kid. But, you know, it doesn't do that, so maybe that's the idea. Pop creates explosions. Um, let's read the, uh, yeah, we'll read the description. Oops. A potent little spell, but one which calls for great mental concentration. This spell must be cast on small pebbles, which will then explode when thrown. These explosions produce great force as well as a loud bang. Okay. I mean, that is possible. We do have pop, so we could do that. I feel like, I mean, okay, so sus doesn't make much sense to me here. Hot doesn't make much sense to me here. Um, Raz sharpening our blade doesn't make much sense to me here. I could see... It tells us some of them, I think, but not all. Yeah. Like, so, it does. It does if we know what the counteracting is. So... Zap counters Zen, um, but we don't have Zap. Hot counters Doc, but again, we don't have that. Foff and Wall don't counter anything. Dumb doesn't counter anything. Sis and Big doesn't counter anything. Um, Sus counters Gak. Um, spell may be cast when the caster suspects a trap. Will indicate telepathically the caster the danger of the best protective action. If already trapped, spell may be used to minimize the effects in certain cases. It counteracts Gak, which is fear. I mean, I guess Sus could work not as a counteracting spell, but just as a straight-ahead spell, like a spell that just works. Um, gum, we don't have the ability to cast anyway. How counters fix. Um, that prevents us from being fixed in place. Uh, Yeah, gave us the option to throw something into the passage. So fix, I don't know. Um, Zen counters zap. Sun counters fog. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. This is very close to me. Uh, yeah. I my my thoughts are 
sun because it's counteracting fog. And yes, it's not quite the same, but the spells here don't work quite the same. And it is counteracting, which is Rudinell's point. Pop to create explosions to kind of blow through the wall. I could definitely see that, although it might also hurt us, but I could see that. Wall, because it creates an invisible wall and there's an invisible wall in front of us. I don't know why a wall in front of a wall is going to do anything, but whatever. Um, or cast res, because res is uh, the thing that uses holy water, which we were told was one of the things for Throben. But as you pointed out, Dunsel, that may be for something inside the tower. Yeah, but it might... First of all, no, fog's not an illusion. Fog is darkness. I, well, I mean, I guess. It doesn't really call it an illusion, though. But even so, yeah, I, I guess I know what you mean, though, because it's a real actual wall. Yeah, but maybe it keeps us from believing in it, and that's what gives it its strength, is that we believe that it exists. I don't know. I could see arguments for all of these. So then that sounds like pop or res to me. I mean, I also don't know that sun hurts anything to do it, right? Casting sun may not cause any problems also. Physical pebbles were blocked. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But that's the thing, though. It was not a handful of pebbles, I don't think. It was dust. Dust, not pebbles. So it didn't actually say pebbles. And no, sun does not cost stamina. So, go ahead and get your votes in chat. Yeah, dust is physical. I agree. I can see some good arguments. Go ahead, go ahead and get your votes in chat. I can see some good arguments here. I just really want to get through this door. I mean, because I'm also thinking of like, I mean, we have other things. We also have, we could also, I mean, if we, the thing is, if we use these things that are just sort of, that don't use stamina, it's no harm, no foul. We could also use tell because we have a skull cap now that we just got downstairs outside in the courtyard and that. That may also, you know, maybe that we counteract something. Maybe that counteracts an illusion. We could cast um, rap because that uses a green wig. We can talk all languages. No harm, no foul. You know what I mean? So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Great, great, great info. Yeah, right, Trippin? All right. Let's try sun then. Let's see how we do with sun. Craft the enchantment until the sun jewel starts to give off a magical white glow. Okay. That didn't change anything, so no. <laughs> but that shows that it doesn't actually bother us. That, so I'm going to open up this spell. I'm going to open up this same vote again. Because that shows us that it doesn't actually hurt us to do this. So we might as well just cast some other stuff that isn't going to affect us if it doesn't require stamina use. Like sus uses a stamina. Hot uses three stamina. We can't afford to waste stuff like that. Res is resurrect. Um, and that uses holy water, but maybe we need to be careful about when we use that or not. You still suspect it's pop? Well, then I mean, you can vote for that. The only thing I say about that is that we use up our pebbles, I think, when we do that. 
Oh, well, we do have six of them, so... We do have six pebbles, so I guess that's fine. So we could do that. So go ahead and get your vote in. If you want to do that, you could do that. We could cast Pop. I could see an argument for casting Tell because we have a skull cap. We might as well try. Or Res. No, it's not going to be Move Away. Because you're not going to be able to access the door. If you move away, it means you're getting away from where you can access the door. You're not going to be able to throw it from a distance. I would be tempted still to do some of these ones that don't hurt to use. Like wrap and tell and um, and they don't use up any like like consumables, you know. Um, Sus uses stamina. I would I would use some of the ones that don't require that don't require any uh, stamina use because it might be that there's some spells that we don't know counteract other spells and we might figure it out by doing this way, you know. So. Pop Goes the World by Man with a Hat. Mm -hmm. All right, get your votes in. Get your votes in, chat. Just want to get through this door. Because if I don't, the problem is if I don't do that, it's going to be next week before we get back to this and we may not remember what the heck we were doing. If we just get through the door, then I won't have to worry about that part anymore. <laughs> Totally should have made the world wall. Oh, definitely do that. Definitely check that out. That's right. The hardcover clearance sale. Yep. I, I, I retweeted that. You definitely should be checking that out, folks. And hey, we talked before about the importance of dragons, so... Alright, I'm going to... I'm going to do that. I'm going to close this out because. All right. So pop. Let's see what we get. Reaching up to the constellations above, you create the spell over one of your pebbles. The glow from your sun jewel fades. Okay. Just tell me in chat. Am I throwing the pebble into the doorway? I am. Am I throwing it? Just tell me in chat if I am. Throw it. Toss it. Okay. Then you toss the pebble at the doorway. Instead of passing into the long, dark hallway, it splashes against an invisible barrier in a cloud of black smoke. There is the smell of charred wood, and then the fireball is gone. Then through the opening, you see a troll emerge into the corridor. Oh, crap. He turns, clearly surprised by the light coming in through the doorway, and he begins to charge towards you. Ah! Well, okay. We already know there's a barrier there, right? All right, chat, do we run for it, draw our sword, or wait? I mean, we do know there's a barrier there. Oh, no. Really jarring thunder. Oh, no. Run for it, draw our sword, or wait? No. I don't think so. Oh. I don't think we blew up the barrier, no. You toss the pebble at the doorway. Instead of passing into the long, dark hallway, it splashes against an invisible barrier in a cloud of black smoke. There is the smell of charred wood, and then the fireball is gone. Then through the opening... What opening? Not the opening and the invisible barrier. 
Oh, they must mean through the door. You see a troll emerge into the corridor. He turns, clearly surprised, and begins to charge towards you. I mean, we don't have a cast spell. We don't have a spell cast option here. We obviously can't run for it. Drawing our sword seems weird because how is it going to get to us? So, I don't know. My thought would be wait, but run for it, draw our sword, or wait. Hey, Wispy. We're right at the end of this. As soon as I just want to get through this damn door. Run for it, draw our sword, or wait. Let's get these votes in, please. There's an invisible barrier, though, Wispy, just so we know. There is an invisible barrier. So. I mean, I guess drawing our sword doesn't mean that we're actually moving anywhere, so I guess that's fine. And if you want to vote for that, Wispy, just do the dollar sign vote space two. I can't tell. I don't know whether it means that something got blown up to the side of the barrier, maybe. But I guess worst comes to worst, we have our sword drawn if the troll arrives. Okay. You draw your sword and wait for the creature, but its charge is abruptly halted as it reaches the opening. Just like the sand you threw, it strikes the invisible barrier, then steps back, rubbing its head in some confusion and glaring at you. Okay, so right. So that means that it can't get through it either, which means that we didn't blow up the barrier. So we can taunt it, which seems unwise. Wait or attack. I don't know how we're going to attack through a barrier. So taunt it is dollar sign vote space one, wait is two, and attack is three. Let's get it to break the door. Interesting if it can do that. Dollar sign vote space one. All right. See you tomorrow, Emily. Sleep well. Yeah, this is a little irritating. I wanted to... Because if I stop now, again, I feel like we're going to forget by the time we get to next week what we were doing. And we're not playing this tomorrow. We've got Expedition tomorrow. I mean, uh, yeah, Expedition tomorrow. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. That makes sense. All right. So we're going to taunt it. You taunt it, causing the troll to run headfirst into the barrier two or three more times. Each collision comes with a resounding thud, like the sound of a fist pounding on wood, though there is no wood to be seen. Eventually, the creature's will gives out. The troll stares at you, and you stare at the troll. Then, with obvious reluctance, the troll slinks away back inside the tower once more. All right. Well, it didn't do anything, but... Okay. So now we know the drill, chat, which is none of those things worked, which means I would say what we ought to do is just use the spells that we know don't cost anything to do. So we have we have tele we have tell, we have a skull cap that we just got, and that doesn't require anything to cast because we have a skull cap, so it's free, we don't lose any stamina. Wrap, we have a green wig that lets us talk all languages. That also doesn't use any stamina. So I would be, I know exactly, Crit Twitch, once it regains consciousness. So my suggestion would be um, that we think about just using the spells that don't actually cast anything. We obviously need a spell. So using the spells that don't cause any stamina loss. So that would be Sus uses a stamina loss. Hot is stamina loss. Resurrect is a possibility, but Resurrect is uh, uses a Holy Water. Yeah, but then why would the, why wouldn't we be able to use the the I, why wouldn't we be able to use the pebbles though? Yeah, why wouldn't we be able to use the dust? There's some barrier there that's keeping us from getting in until we counteract it somehow.
forgot to add that stamina thing before. So, I mean, again, telepathy doesn't use anything. Rap doesn't use anything. Raise doesn't do, I mean, Raise uses honey, um, like beeswax. We have lots of that, but that's just wasting it because we can't use it against anything here. We tried Sun, that didn't do anything. We tried Pop, that doesn't work, although we know that there's a barrier. I can check the, the spell list, but I think it's going to be the same, but I'll check. So we have Tell, I can already see. We have Pop, that's again explosions. We have Wall, that's the same. Whoops, sorry. Uh. Zen counter zap. Yeah, I guess it's not actually the full thing. Shoot. All right, wait a second. Well, nobody, but it. Some of these spells counteract things. Um. Okay, so Zen counter zap. So that doesn't cost anything. That's another option. Although I don't know why we'd need to counter zap, but that is a possibility. Um, zip. Yeah, wow. I didn't realize that there were some... Not a lot of different ones, but a few different ones. Counters gum. That doesn't necessarily cost anything. Um, hot is the same. Whoops, sorry. We have res again. We have raz and rap again. We already had rap there. So it looks like everything else is the same. They just added a couple of others. Um,. Yaz causes invisibility. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. If Yaz causes invisibility, if there's an invisible wall in front of us, right? Invisible barrier, they keep using that language. Then we need something which counters Yaz, but we don't know what that is yet. So presumably one of our spells counters Yaz, but I know we don't know which one it is because we looked through the entire spell book. But that suggests maybe that's what we need to counteract, right? Because Yaz is invisibility. So... So, I mean... Again, like, Resurrect the Dead doesn't counteract anything, plus it uses holy water. We don't know if Rap counter uh, counteracts anything. We don't know if Tell counteracts anything. We don't, we already know sun counters fog, but that didn't do anything. Zen counters zap, but again, zap doesn't seem to be the clue here. Zip counters gum, but again, gum doesn't seem to be the clue here either. I don't know, maybe we do tell, or maybe we do, um, or maybe we do rap. Because those counter, I mean, I it's a guess on tell, but I'm, or rap, because I don't know, maybe rap counteracts that. But I'm wondering if we counteract... The point is to counteract yes. Maybe. Because that's invisibility. I don't know. Tell reveals things. Yaz hides things. Maybe. I mean, again, it doesn't hurt to try it, right? Like, we have a skull cap, So it's not going to use up the skull cap, So we could try. I'm just thinking because Yaz is invisible. So, like... Yeah, tell maybe reveals. These things are close, but not quite the same. So, maybe. Is that what we should do? So, if so, then go ahead and get the vote in. And it would be uh, four is what you're looking for, Rudno. There you go. All right, I'm going to last call this. I want to move this ahead if I can and see what we get.
All right, let's see. Let's see if invisibility is counteracted by Tell. If that's true, it'll also give us another counter spell, which we didn't have before, so that'd be nice. All right, uh, T, E, and we just got the skull cap for it. You spin the, ah! You spin the constellations into shape around you, pulling on the cloth skull cap as you do so. A moment later, the door is visible once more. Now you can see it, your hopes lift suddenly. The door to the central tower of Manpang hangs a crack ajar. A good shovel open it. But you cannot help but feel there's still another trap to be overcome. Okay, so we did, we managed something. There is a message on the door now that was not visible previously. You trace out the message on the door. Words of the most ancient tongue. I am protected by the worst force in the world. Retreat, for I will take all your yesterdays and I will take all your tomorrows. That's death. Right? That's death. That's what we use resurrect for. That's what we use resurrect for, right? Doesn't that make sense? Let's see what spells we have option. The number four is for four traps. You were right, Rude. No. You were right. Although it wasn't, it was not like the fourth trap. It was just telling you there were four in total. That's a good call. All right, uh, let's see. We have... Okay, we have how. It's either, yeah, it's either res or fear. Oop, not ha ha how. Okay, or Huff, that's the wind one. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Um, okay, F, O, force field. There's fog, which counters sun. We tried that before. Okay. Yap is talk with animals. Yob is summon a giant. I know, right? <laughs> Real spike in the ASCII. Yeah, this is definitely, uh, they did not want people in the way. Um, okay. P, P, P causes strength. Goblin we can't do because we do not have a goblin's tooth, so we can't cast that. Uh, tech from magic. Okay. 
Okay, do we even have res as an option? We do. We do have res as an option. Okay. We do have it as an option. So, I am protect the worst force in the world. Retreat for I will take all your yesterdays and I will take all your tomorrows. I mean, that, it sounds to me like res. That's holy water. We have two of them, so we can use one and still have one left, even if we're wrong, you know? So... seems right it like so far this has made sense to me man this door is crazy go nuts this door so are you voting for that one uh Dunsel? res is five I was just functioning. Uh, yeah, uh, it is. It is five, Wispy. All right, let's see if we're right, people. I feel bad that we wasted a holy water before, but we did have three choices, three options. So, or no, not F. The frick. R. R. There we go. All right. You take the vial of holy water from your pack and cast your spell. The water begins to shimmer and shine with an inner light. Oh, crap. What do we do with it, though? So, do we pour it on the, I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I'm try I'm literally like Probably we pour it on the door. Scroll up to when the you talk about here. It's worked three times. Has it though? I mean, I guess every time we did it on the door, right? So pour it on the wall, pour it on the door. Okay, let's do it. You pour the glittering water over the handle of the door. It seems to soak into the wood without any noticeable effect. Whether it's had any effect in the door is impossible to say. You reach for the door to push only to feel a crackling of energy as your fingers near the wood. You snatch your hand back quickly. All right, chat. The message is on the door. Do we push it? We feel the crackling of energy. 
Do we push the door? I feel like we push the door, yes? Push it. Push the door. Push, push, push. Yes. Is everyone in favor? Push. Push it. Push it good. There's no other way to know. You reach out for the wood, allow your fingers to connect with it. The effect is instant. A fire erupting for the wood and down into your arms. But a moment later, the sensation fades. Indeed, you feel refreshed as though your body had been destroyed and then built anew. Your maximum stamina is increased. You step without difficulty through the Throben door and into the tower beyond. You found two new clues. Another clues have been updated. Let's go. Let's go. Woo! <sighs> yep. Potion turned it into a life spell. We did it, chat. Holy cow. We did it. And we still have a holy water left. That was intense. Yeah, same thing it did the other three times. But figuring out the counter spells to this was fascinating. Wow. All right. Well, guess what, chat? <laughs> it is time to close down the game. We will Now I feel okay because now we're going to be able to, next time we play, someone who plays tonight, just remind me, we will need to try to find a place to sleep because we desperately need food and we're going to need more stamina. But moving our maximum stamina up to 26 is really, really good. That is really good stuff. Also, I want to make sure that it saves here. So let me make sure that it saved. Yeah, that was really cool. I I was very impressed. The writing, the writing on that one section was a little was not great. Uh, the the section before, but the mechanics of it were great, and a lot of the other writing was great here too. We played twenty one hours so far, but we're inside the tower now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But listen, I'm not going to complain in this situation. Like, to my mind, that could have been way worse. You know, like, I I, I feel like in a way I'm just kind of like, yeah, so it didn't work out exactly. But given the circumstances, I think it's quite possible that we needed to get rid of the immortality curse to proceed. I think it's all, I think it plays it out as if it's like this dramatic, you know, like, oh, you know, but this, but I think it's quite possible that it does that on purpose to kind of set up this way. Right. I wonder about that, Arudinel. I wonder about that. That's what makes me really think, yeah. And see, I like the idea that maybe there's something like that that comes out of it that we may just have sort of stumbled into. This <laughs> godless magical foot doctors. The Tower of Throbin. No, no, no. It's Throbin. Throbin. All right. Um, it is late, chat. Much later than I intended to go. But I was just having a great time. And I really wanted to get through those doors so that we don't forget we're doing next. So... Great work. Awesome work. Everyone is awesome here. If you like what you saw and heard today, we will play more of this game. As I say, next week, we're going to play a fair bit of it in April. And I think, I think, knock on wood, that we should be able to get through it, which will set us up beautifully for Jedi Survivor, which will be the game next, I think. So, um... That was very cool. I really enjoyed tonight. If you like what you saw and heard, please follow the channel. Check out our YouTube with exclamation point ArvTube, Discord with exclamation point ArvCord, Twitter with exclamation point ArvTweets, website ArvinElleron.com, financially exclamation point ArvShop for the merchandise area, exclamation point ArvTreon for the Patreon, uh, and of course, uh, don't forget to check out on the publishing side. Sub to the channel, please, as some of you did today. That is very much appreciated. Um, and of course, um, all right, can I, sorry, Rudinell. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm trying to move us along here because it is late uh exclamation point help uh actually uh blm no let me back up all the way 
Publishing, Excavation Point Icarus for my Icarus graphic novel from Athens Arts, Excavation Point Library for my Tales and Tomes from the Forbidden Library, my 5e adventure and source book from Alligator Alley Entertainment, and Excavation Point Help Now, which is the World Health Organization page on suicide prevention. Important to reach out to others when you need help. Reach out to others when they need help as well. I realized I just skipped gray shade. I'll come back to it. Excavation Point Ukraine, U-K-R-A-I-N-E, to help the people of Ukraine as they fight back against an illegal and illegitimate war with bravery and courage. This is our chance to step up and help them and hopefully send a message that will help others in the future. Now, I missed this part. Excavation Point Gray Shade is my novel, which came out last year from Mathis Arts. You can order that right now. You can also pre-order the copy of Heretic, which will be the sequel that's coming out, is the sequel that's coming out later this year. Uh, Heretic will be coming out next year. That will conclude that trilogy of books. Gray Shade, the tabletop role-playing game, you can pre-order at that link that's coming out later this year from Brandon O'Brien and Alligator Alley Entertainment is publishing it and Exclamation Point Gray Shade will also let you uh, pre-order a copy of the Gray Shade audiobook. So you'll definitely want to check that out as well. Thank you very much for doing that because that's all super cool. Last but certainly not least, these two things. Uh, Klein, exclamation point Klein. Please spread the word. Let people know if you're in the Connecticut area and would love to be able to come to a live D&D event. I will be doing this uh, as the kickoff event for our annual ARFCON charity convention to benefit uh, the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, that is this right here. It is going to be May 25th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Eastern um, at the historic Klein Memorial Auditorium. $5 tickets will get you inside the door and you can watch it in person or you can pay $5 and also watch a live stream of the event as well. That money will benefit both the Klein Memorial Auditorium and again uh, the Damon Running Cancer Research Foundation, which is the whole focus of this as well. This is the flyer we have been using and we also have this, which is another live event and you can do your little QR code and you can see the little dragon in the middle, which I think is super cool. So you should check both of those um, and spread the word. I'm looking forward to Yeah, I bet the photos are going to be great. I can't wait for that either, he said with a wink. Um, so yes, any support that people can give by spreading the word about that. If you do live uh, in the Connecticut area, even if you don't, um, and are willing to distribute these flyers, because again, there is that virtual option, even if you don't live close by, please let me know uh, via Twitch PM or on Discord, and I will be happy to mail you some of these flyers and or send you digital copies of the flyers. You can also download those digital copies from my Discord channel as well. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. My wonderful mods, Rudinell, Dragonspear, Drew, Prince Justin, and Trifity Mats, of course, uh, and uh, Xanos. Also, thank you to my wonderful um, Patreon supporters and subscribers. Also, Emily was here as well and some others, but I'm just talking about people who are here now. Also, thanks to my wonderful Patreon supporters and subscribers, Arudinel, Dragon, Drew, Prince Justin, Triffid. Uh, thank you to Nonstop, to Wispy Song, to Commander Dunsel, Crit Twitch, and Mrs. Dunsel. And thank you to my wonderful viewers, to Agurno, to Darksteel Spork, Dinatera. Uh, thank you to Aerith, to Gaia Shield, to Elizabeth, to Tenajang, to This Is Unreal Lol, and that's certainly true, and to Yamikle. No raid tonight, super late, um, but I will see you folks tomorrow for Expedition, or later Saturday, I should say, for Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks. And then, as I said, uh, I will see you folks as well for more of this game coming up in uh, next week and the weeks to come. But um, really good time tonight, and we made it through the Throben Doors, you're all. We, we saw the Throben Doors, and we conquered. That's it for me. Uh, much love to all of you folks. As I always say, everyone be good to each other, and I will see you folks uh, Saturday evening for some cool TTRPG play. Until then, everyone be good to each other. Have a good night. Huh?